dirt roads to rock crawling, two buck chuck to screaming eagle, moonshine to 50 year old single malt. We talk about it all here on Wheelin' Wine and Whiskey with your hosts, Jason and Chris. Welcome to the Wheeling Wine and Whiskey Podcast, episode 223. It's actually 224, but we skipped one. <laughs> we won't count that, though. That was what happened? A, that was a breakfast ball. You know, in golf, when you, you don't hit the driving range, you're a trunk slammer. You just roll up to the golf course, throw on your shoes, and head to the first tee. That's right. It's called a breakfast ball. Breakfast ball, for sure. Yeah. You, you top the first one, and then you slam one right down the middle of the fairway. Just, that's your warm-up right there. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> Nothing to see here. <laughs> Nothing to see here. I was up at Meadow Lake in uh, the Shangri-La, the um, beautiful, beautiful Meadow Lake. And uh, yeah. you, unfortunately, were uh, not able to even get a hold of Rodney because he was at Meadow Lake. Yep. Uh, all, your, all your go-to backup people were gone. Yeah, I know. Well, that's all right. I uh, I spoke to myself and I hated what I heard, so I just didn't go with it. <laughs> you just you just deleted it and moved on. <laughs> I love it. I interviewed my dog, but all she did was bark. So. Oh my god, that dog knows how to bark too. Really oh, does. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. It's got a it's got a little attitude, a little toot. Well, it's a small dog syndrome, right? Yes, exactly. She's exactly. king of the hill. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So we we're recording on a Monday. Jason's back from Meadow Lake. He's uh, fully fresh and recharged. Still not looking so happy and or uh, looking good. Wow. Well, you should be fully recharged, but you're still ugly. But you know. uh, yes. Well, there's nothing we can do about that. That's why we do radio <laughs> and not TV, Chris. But the good thing is Monday in Livermore is the first day of school. I've got the house to myself, just me and my yappy dog, which is sleeping right next to my table right here. Oh. Wow. And uh, we've got stuff to talk about, right? I think so. We uh, we did a little recording up at uh, Meadow Lake after um, doing a whiskey tasting, blind oh, whiskey yeah, tasting sure again. So that's coming up. Well. <laughs> yeah, there's there's definitely some editing that you got to do. Good luck with that. Um, but uh, yeah, it was. Uh, we missed you. We tried to get you up there. We called you a couple times, but. Uh, you you were occupado and uh, could not could not attend, um, no. but we we had a libation or two in your honor. Your honor. Well, I appreciate that. I certainly uh, missed being up there. I heard about all the shenanigans. I saw the post from Sierra Trek twenty twenty three, and I was uh, you know fomoing pretty bad. I I love Sierra Trek. I love the the vibe in Summit City main camp that uh, happens every year, and apparently it was a a record-breaking affair this year, and uh, I guess the vendor situation was off the cuff, and uh, yeah, it went well. It went very well. The weather was uh, warm. It was shorts weather the whole time. A uh, little bit of rain on Saturday during the vendor show, but nothing to scatter anybody. <laughs> and, thunder, uh, lightning, or just rain? No, no, just uh, just rain. I don't think there was any thunder that day. There was some serious thunderstorms, though, last week that were awesome, flat oh, out yeah. awesome. Hail? Nothing like a good, no, didn't get any hail, but nothing like a good Sierra thunderstorm. Oh, hell and yeah. I got some good video. Uh, we got rained on, on trail on Monday. Uh, boy, that trail is uh, pretty slick when it's wet, I'll tell you that. <laughs> it's slick when it's not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stickies or not, man, it's just slick. Um, but anyways, back to the uh, main event. We did cover it a little bit in the recording, but so, yeah, there was a lot of people in camp on Saturday. I stayed in camp all day, uh, Got the had breakfast, the food was great, um, and then set up the vendor booth, had mm -hmm. the dirt bag awning. Oh, yeah. Johnny uh, sent sent to Nevada for me. So, uh, really nice awning. We need to get one. Of, we need to get a wheeling wine and whiskey awning. Okay, but they're expensive. Yeah. Well, the way we're spending money, it's uh, we need yeah. to we need yeah we need to like save a up drunken for sailor. a few, few a few bucks before we can pull that one off. But Anthony was there with DFF Fab. He has some cool Toyota parts on the table. What? Yeah, no, I was calling them Toyota parts. They were like gargantuan U-joint and outer 
uh, <laughs> outer, outer shaft, uh, and it was as big as a Toyota axle, the whole axle itself, uh, oh, just the, the drive shaft. No it shit. Was, it was impressive. Yeah, outer, outer, no slugs needed with this operation. Um, but anyways, he had some cool stuff. His uh, element fire extinguisher uh, holders that he came up with that spring-loaded. Uh-huh. So... Um, it ties to your roll cage via hose clamp or however you want to tie it to your roll cage. And then the element slides in over a spring at the base and then locks in at the top, at the very top of the element. It has an indentation and he, uh, he perfect size hole slips right in there, locks in really nice. So all you got to do to get the element out quickly is just grab it, pull it down a little bit and it comes right out of the holder. Um, but yet it's locked in on the trail. It's not going to come undone on the trail. Cool. Um, so he has those on his website. Um, and I did give him some elements to sell on his website so he could sell a package deal uh, there. But um, uh, let me double check his website. I believe it's DFF Fab. Um, they're out of the valley. Right. Um. Yeah, it's DFF, it's DF Fabrication, so D-F-F-A-B-R-I-C-A-T-I-O-N.com. Okay. Um, so check it out, um, and he's got those online. I'll put those in the, that, that link in the show notes. All right, perfect. Um, so then uh, Johnny, I had, he sent me a box of swag, so um, I sold several hats of his the, the people love the dirtbag hats and then um had some uh you know stickers of course we gave out a ton of stickers wheeling wine and whiskey stickers dirtbag oh, stickers yeah. uh so that was cool um had the aod um ancient out- order of the deep yeah had that out there as well so that was uh, really cool um and then did a uh, did a video. So Keith and Melissa, you know, Keith has the beard. So uh, uh-huh. we, we did a little video there for Johnny on that and uh, with the beard care kit. And uh, it, Melissa was impressed. She goes, man, that's the best his beard's looked in a long time. Uh, so, so that was cool. Um, and then... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I could go somewhere with that, but I'm, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm keeping my so, mouth shut. So then, um, we uh, also tried the dry shampoo and conditioner on James after running trail on Wednesday, um, and uh, that stuff's pretty cool. It's a powder, you know, so it kind of soaks up the oil and stuff. Um, uh-huh. But um, it's it, it's perfect for when you're not doing the Lance Life thing and you're just out on the trail at Barrett or Rubicon where we're spending the night or two out there. Mm-hmm. Um, so so that's really cool. Um, I just looked up. He's selling those mounts for twenty bucks, nineteen ninety nine oh, on his hell uh, website. Deal. Yeah, yeah. So that's cool. Um, it's simple. It's really simple and effective. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, we had... When you have an emergency, you want to be able to reach your fire extinguisher and get it fired off as quickly as possible. Yeah, we got to get on it right away. I I must have done the elevator speech for Element uh, over 100 times that day. People walking up. What what is that? (laughs) How's that put out a fire? And so I had to... Had the demo model there and, you know, did the elevator speech and showed them, you know, you strike it like a flare. Uh-huh. Um, so a lot of people were, we got a lot of people educated on it. We sold quite a few and a lot of mounts. Uh, the tact- It's kind of funny. The I thought the tactical mounts would be more popular, but it's kind of 50-50. Oh. Uh, people go for the roll bar mount and then the tactical mount. Uh, you know, maybe it's geared more for overlanders. I don't know, but uh, yeah. I like the way that it's a sleeve and protects it. Yeah, but it's it's also seems like it could be in my mind. It seems like it would take a little bit longer to get it. Get the, I uh, just risk the Velcro and go, baby. Yeah, true. It's true. easy, easy. So, anyways, it, it was great. Um, I wish you were there because I was freaking exhausted by the end of the day <laughs> trying to balance between dirtbag stuff. Uh, I was trying to keep track of, of of sales for hats, sales of fire extinguishers, this, that, the other thing. I know I missed some stuff, but I'm going to try and do some uh, accounting here. I got Lorenzo on it right now. He's over there in the corner uh, counting right now. Does um, he have but, his little ac- ac- uh, green accounting hat on and everything? Yeah, he does have his little green accounting hat, but he doesn't... Um, 
he doesn't uh, fold the the bills very well with his hooves, so he's he's having some trouble over there, aren't you, Lorenzo? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You build no him a little box thumbs. where you can just stick stick him in there and just clomp on him, you know. Wait, where are you going with that hundred dollar bill, Lorenzo? He likes Nevada. He's he's uh, found some friends over here, and uh, I'm I'm sure wait, he'd go he's he's walking out the door with a hundred dollar bill right go now. Go up to Carson City and bang a right. And he's going and down the driveway. <laughs> He's headed to the Carson Valley Inn right now. I think he's going to put a hundred on on black. <laughs> so good luck, his, Lorenzo. We could have his girlfriends out there at the Kit Kat Lounge too. You know. All right, we'll let it. We'll let him go. We'll let him slide on that one. Let's see. Maybe he'll come back with a double, two hundred bucks. We'll see. Uh, probably he's, not. He's got to come back with nothing, and he's going to smell like cigarette smoke. Not letting him in the house tonight. Perfect. Turn on the sprinklers in the lawn. Gosh, no, don't need to. There. We had we had Hurricane Hillary come through. <laughs> what a joke. <laughs> what a freaking joke that was. Uh, we got good rain. We got about four tenths of an inch here, uh, oh, wow. which is very nice in August. But I, yeah, I, I was cracking up. I saw Cody Wagner's post this morning. He's like, oh, yeah, we're still alive after Hurricane Hillary. <laughs> My younger brother lives down in uh, San Diego. He said that it rained pretty hard. I mean, steady for 20 hours but the wind never got stupid so he was pretty you know he's like yeah, it was kind of a and you know kind of came in with a roar but not not that big of a roar that's what i asked johnny because you know he lives down there in escondido right. dirtbag johnny and i'm like hey what's going on you know and he says no no it's it's fine it's raining okay it's getting heavier it just rained. It was just steady rain. But they get any more than tenth of an inch down there, and that's a tropical storm for them. So yeah. they're, everybody they're starts flooded. starts freaking out. Freaking out, man. Yeah, so. no, I get, that storm was legit when it was off the coast of Baja and south uh, south west of Mexico. I guess it was a, at one point it was a Category Four, which is no joke, man. That's a that's a, a killer. It can be a very yes. very dangerous situation. So, but as we all know, when a storm like that hits hits uh, makes landfall, it loses a lot of its luster, loses yeah. a lot of energy. No, but that that was good that it's not. Uh, yeah, it didn't cause any major issues. Uh, Lord knows California doesn't need any more major catastrophes. So no, but it was kind of nice to kind of soak down the mountains a little bit and oh, keep that sure. fire danger down. Because for you know, sure, I, I know that uh, before. I don't know, was, when was it? For August first, I think they put the fire restrictions in for the mountains, and, and you had to be you couldn't have just random campfires. You had to be in an established campground with uh, established fire rings and all that stuff. So uh, this is all that's all this little rainstorms and stuff that moves through the Sierras help help you know control the fire danger. Well, I'll tell you, the Sierras are like spring up there. There's still a, a bunch of flowers blooming. Mm-hmm. It, it, it is. It is. Uh, it just had to keep reminding myself that it's August, um, but it was beautiful up there. Lake was crazy full. How cold was the water? It was cold, not crazy cold, but it was cold. I'll tell you, Fordyce Creek was freaking freezing. <laughs> that that was cold. I um, the second river crossing we went and did the down to windshield one on Wednesday. Okay, so you okay. we had six rigs. So we had uh, my buggy, James and Rhonda and their buggy. We had uh, the Plakes and their buggy. Emmy. And then we, uh, yeah, Emmy. And then we had um, uh, Phil um, and his son, Austin. And um, uh, who am I forgetting here? I thought we had six rigs. Uh... <laughs> I wasn't there. I can't help you, man. Oh my gosh, I'm totally drawing a blank. That's terrible. Oh boy. I know. Oh boy. I know. So uh, Phil, Phil made it up there. Did he bring his Jeep? Or were they? Phil on the brought the bike? Jeep and ran the trail in the Jeep. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, fantastic. You know, he's got the the LS motor in there now. And it's running on 40s, right? Exactly. Yeah. That Jeep's badass. It's it did really well. Um, he went down windshield one and back up. Oh, good. Oh, I know who. It wasn't a Jeep, that's why, or a, a rig. It was a Big Pete in the side-by-side. Oh, Big Pete. The wasabi. Wasabi. So, Big Pete is hilarious um, and uh, aptly named uh, Big Boy. Yeah. Uh, but he is in the side-by-side arena. So, remember, he had the single-seat side-by-side right, at, on at Hammers a couple years ago. Yeah. Well, he's building another one that's going to be on portals and just crazy. Single seat? Yep. And so this Kawasaki, he he's driven them all. 
He's owned them all, and he said the Kawasaki is the best rock, um, best one for crawl, rock crawling. Okay. And I guess it does have a belt, but it's continuously spinning, and it has uh, some kind of CVT uh, transmission. So um, I'll tell you, that thing cruised really well over the trail. Um, and he did some mods to it. Uh, main mods were putting the seat back so you know he could reach the pedals and be comfortable. <laughs> um, I sit in there and I I can barely touch the bottle uh, the pedals and and operate the pedals when I'm sitting in the seat. James uh-huh. is sitting there like a little kid. He can't his feet doesn't even touch the ground when he's sitting in the seat. <laughs> it's, it was funny. Um, but yeah, we got to the second river crossing, um, going down the trail, and uh, she was pretty deep. James went across first, and I'm like, ooh, this is interesting. So he's on 43s. I'm on 43s. I'm like, all right, let's see. And uh, the water came right up to my floorboard. Didn't come inside oh, the rig, but it was right up to the floorboard. Um, so, so obviously pg and opened the dam a little bit. Yeah, so it was over over two feet deep. Well, we checked Dream Flows, and it was hovering around the, the 125, uh, 140-ish um, uh, CFM. Yeah. Cubic feet uh, per minute. Cubic no, feet CFS. per second. CFS. CFS. And uh, we got corrected on that before. So see, we learn. We learn here at the uh, Wheeling Wine and Whiskey we're podcast. That way. So, um, Google so it. <laughs> <laughs> Pete did not want to go across because he goes, dude, I'm going to be swimming. The rig can make it, no problem. All the intake and everything's high. Um, and so, but uh, the lunch, <laughs> Kimberly always has food on the trail. There's snacks uh-huh. and everything. So she brought these huge, these monstrous um, tamales. And we put them in the back of James' rig because that thing we're calling the Easy Bake Oven now because it's it's so it gets so hot back there. <laughs> so he makes it across. Well, he's got lunch. So if you want lunch, you got to make it across the river. And so um, Pete's like, "All right." So he literally took off his shoes and socks and rolled up his pants and went across. And it was like calf deep for him oh, uh, sitting in the rig, but he made it across no problem. Um, and then Glenn didn't want to take the buggy across because their intake is pretty low. Oh. It's like right behind the, the winch. And so he stuck his nose into the center hole a couple times and the fans were hitting the water and he goes, oh, no, I don't like this. So he backed out, disconnected the fans and then drove through slow and he was able to make it across. But prior to that, he walked across, um, in his shorts with, uh, walking sticks and that water was moving, you know, pretty good. And it was freaking out cold um but you know if anybody was going to walk across it'd be glenn plake you know sure so that was entertaining so i gave him a ride back across so he didn't have to walk back across to get the buggy um but got the buggy over there and then from there it's a short you know stint to to windshield two and then down to windshield one and um you know we didn't see anybody till we got to the bottom of windshield one and there was a group from washington that came up uh-huh. And we talk about that in, uh, in this uh, little segment coming up here. Uh, so that was a blast. Um, we, we all made it up, no problem. There was one rock that was binding up some, uh, some diffs, but um, it caught the Washington guys pretty good. But uh, uh, Aaron, I remember Aaron, yeah, he had some trouble there, and then the guy behind him. Um, but anyways, uh, so we took off from there, went up, back up the trail, played a little bit at three, um, or committee, and then at three, uh, there was a crazy line there that we talk about that uh, James almost rolled on coming down uh, and wanting to try it and going back up. And, uh, yeah, he almost rolled going back up that line. Uh, there's a good save there. That's on IG right now. Oh, uh-huh. And, uh, yeah, so we we made, we left camp. Our goal was to leave at 9, and then we rolled out at, like, 9.15, 9.20. We did pretty good. And we were back at camp by, like, 4, 4.30. All the way down uh, to, to below All the way down to 1 and back. And, you know, Dave Code had never been past Windshield 3 committee. Seriously? No. I'm was, like, was all the right years. Seat? Yeah, 18-plus years he's been there, and he's never made it down to Windshield 2, 1, and... River Crossing 2, I was like, that, that, I couldn't believe that. But anyway, so he had a ball uh, riding in the buggy and, and uh, seeing new terrain. So. <laughs> how, how was Winch Hill 2 this year? Because I know that's been kind of up and down over the years. And was uh, it two's good. I mean, it, it still has that center, you know, ledge, waterfall deal. So if you, 
you know, coming down, you hug to the left up against a tree. There's like a ramp there. And then going yeah. back up, you hug the tree to the right and, and go up. But um, it's definitely a little, um, a little dicey. Um, and uh, windshield four is still just just tough, just I, flat I, out I, tough. I Five's the, five. The worst. Windshield yeah. four, the reports I heard and things I was reading on, on uh, Instagram and Facebook was – uh, windshield four was gnarly. Yeah, it's it's a nasty place to get an electric vehicle stuck. Let me tell you. Oh shit! So um, we'll we'll play Keith's voicemail here. Uh, maybe we should play that right now. Should we play that, do that right now? A yeah, let's, voicemails. Let's, let's plug that in right now because uh, we decided to go out Saturday night. I was dead tired. I had no business going out Saturday night. I should have stayed back in camp. But this uh, is during trek. This is during trek. Hi, Ron. Yeah, so I did. I ended the speech, you know, I emceed that night, and I was going, night run. <laughs> that was that was it. I said, good night, everybody, night run. Uh, okay, here here's the one from Keith. Oh, my God, it's the Will and Wine and Whiskey podcast. How are you doing? This is Evolve Racing. It's Wednesday evening, and I thought that we'd have a podcast on today, but <laughs> still no podcast. Nope. Jason must be having a good time still at Sierra Trek yep. at Metal Lake. Uh, thought we would hear maybe about our shit show we had uh, taking the EV truck out for a test kit at night time. <laughs> Got show all night. Hope to hear the podcast. See you. All right. Well, yeah. So, so Saturday after the vendor show, um, I mean, it after ended the around. Raffle, you mean. Yeah. No. After the the vendor show, I was saying I was just dead tired, packed up, and. And then we had to get ready for, you know, dinner and then the, the big show. Mm-hmm. Um, so met with John and Renee and, and we got uh, our itinerary dialed in. So we, we, were, we were really efficient this year. I still think we can shave another 15, 20 minutes off the program, but it was much smoother this year. Um, so we finished around 9 o'clock. Oh, good. And then, um, you know, Keith and Melissa were there and he wanted to run the, you know, electric vehicle truck there, the test 10 right. uh, down the trail. So we, I said, Hey, let's go do the cabin loop. So, you know, we go to catfish pond and do that. Mm-hmm. I love that loop. It's fun at night. You it pop is. out right at the top of windshield five. Right by the uh, so we go, go down five and, uh, Ozzy's right behind me. And then I see evolve racing behind him. And so I continue down to the cistern and, you know, go down that, open part of the trail right before windshield four and the smooth so, rock. Yeah. So I was going to turn around, but then I go, ah, oh, let's go down windshield four. You know, why not? <laughs> We're already here. Sure. And Olivia was riding with me, Jesse's wife. Uh huh. And so we go down to the bottom of windshield four and I wait and they, they, here comes Ozzy. Here comes uh, Keith and Melissa in the test 10. And then here comes Broncos and Horton. And we talk about this on the other deal. So I'll, I'll leave that part. He just, Horton was on another planet. Uh, he was feeling no pain. He was a passenger. He wasn't driving. Um, so they continued on to windshield three. So we turn around and come back up. So I pop right up windshield four and I'm waiting and waiting. And then I hear Ozzy say, uh, we got major problems. I go, Oh crap. What kind of major problems? And I go down there and evolve, uh, test 10 is, uh, no boom, boom, just dead. Like it got unplugged. So what do you need a paper control or delete? I asked him if he needed a nine volt battery. Um, <laughs> but I felt helpless because usually I could help diagnose, you know, something or troubleshoot. Right. I don't know about ones and zeros and, and all this crap. I'm like, I, I can't help you, Keith. I don't know what to do. And uh, he goes, yeah, I, I, we need a laptop. We need the computer program, but we don't Jesus even have Christ. that. It's a they, brand they new program. Did at uh, King of the Hammers about carrying well, a laptop with him? Yeah, I don't know what all this, this was. I mean, the truck was running great, and he uh-huh. thought he had it bugged out, but apparently not. You know, it's all these new car blues and right. I mean, the truck is badass. You look at that truck no, and you're like, man, this thing's badass. But, you know, you're doing you're doing cutting edge stuff. And this is the stuff you got to learn. Unfortunately, bleeding edge. Bleeding unfortunately, edge. at night's not a good spot. And uh, <laughs> playing around with 400 volts in the middle of windshield four is not a good idea either. No. So. Um, so I pulled him and that, that shitty built winch that I have 12,000 pound ground away again. I don't know how this thing is still going, um, after pulling all the logs and everything on adopt a trail, but we, um, pulled a dead, pulled him up windshield four from the center. Not doubled up. Nope. Nope. 
and uh, then we started dragging him up, and then the shenanigans ensued. We got to that corner. He got wedged, and I had to tap out. I literally I'll go, Keith, sorry, I got to go. Mentally, physically, I am done. I am making very poor decisions right now. I need to get out of here. And um, so there was uh, the grim jeepers that came down, and uh, so he, it wasn't like I left him out on the trail by himself, right? Right. Um, and I'm like, I, I, I just can't do it. My buggy's not heavy enough to pull you. Ozzy's pulling on the front of me. He's beating up his buggy. I'm like, I'm out here all week. I don't want to break my buggy on Saturday night before a week's worth of wheeling. And um, so we got out of there. The Grim Jeepers got in there and started um, going to town. And they got... Um, I guess they ended up rolling a four door JK that was in the middle, which was my position. Um, It was two brothers, um, but they took eight people and rolled it back upright. (laughs) And uh, they ended up getting. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, they they couldn't winch it. it. Yeah, they couldn't winch it for whatever reason. Um, (laughs) I, I was sawing logs at this point. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to have Keith and Melissa on the podcast to get into the finer details, but, uh, they made it back to camp. Um, no blood, no foul at uh, about four thirty, four forty five in the morning. Mm. So, yeah, so that was the Saturday night shit show run. Um, you know, always, always good times out there on the trail (laughs) till they're not. (laughs) (laughs) Oh gosh. So, um, yeah, and then and then uh, everybody, you know, Sunday morning was great, beautiful day, breakfast, wave goodbye to everybody. Watch the, bye-bye. the Congo bye-bye line now. of people bye. leaving. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. <laughs> so then the, there was uh, still, I don't know, 30, 40 people left in camp Sunday night, um, but it was super quiet. Um Good. Like we talked about in the uh, there, it's just like not in the years past where camps, you know, go until two, three in the morning. Um, it was like it seemed like you know as soon as the band shut down at midnight, it was like crickets. Yeah, uh, which was nice, you know. Older crowd now, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, so so then, um, yeah, just chilled out, got camp set up on Sunday, and then uh, Monday it rained, and we went down the trail to Windshield 3, played around there. I dislocated a finger. Um, oh it's still swollen. That was crazy. I look, like, I was drinking my LaCroix, totally sober, watching James do the pillow line, and wow. I was moving over to get a better, better view uh, with the camera, and I just, the rocks are slicker than snot. I slipped. My hips all jacked up, uh, landed on my hip, and uh, my right pinky finger just went and did a 90 degree to the right. And I looked down, I go, oh, that's not good. And then Pete looks at me, he goes, you know what I got to do? And I go, yeah, I do. So he grabs my wrist and pulled my finger straight again. <laughs> so did, thanks, did Pete, you, Dr. Pete. Stick, did he give you a stick to put in your mouth? Right nope, now? nope. <laughs> <laughs> didn't it actually didn't hurt that bad it was i expected a lot worse i guess but i'm glad it didn't hurt bad but it 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 hurt for the next few days really bad i had to tape it up um it's I'm sure it's you used lots of medicine doing better now too uh yeah whiskey helps whiskey helps <laughs> so so then <laughs> um tuesday uh we went up uh, so monday night the plaques came in and so tuesday i said hey let's go up to lacy peak after breakfast so we went up to lacy peak hung up out up there for a long time there was a bunch of snow that's what i heard on the backside yeah over 15 foot drifts in some areas what uh yeah it's like, you know there's always some snow up there it seems like it, it, yeah, it maybe a little patch but boy uh there was a ton up there wow. um so glenn was you know skiing down on his shoes uh down the slope there and build a snowman um want to build a snowman mm-hmm. <laughs> Not going to give up my day job. And then we headed over to our our shooting range and went shooting. So that was a blast. Yeah, literally. Um, Pun intended. (laughs) And then uh, dinner that night, they busted out the the cheese from France. And uh, yeah, I I can't even pronounce any of them other than the uh, 30-year age Parmesan. But uh, everything was freaking wonderful. And uh, then... uh, Wednesday, we did trail all day. Thursday, I just wanted to stay in camp. Stayed in camp, and we it was game day. Uh, we played uh, the front nine of Meadow Lake Country Club. <laughs> so that was that was cool. There was uh, Big Pete, myself, and Rodney, 
And um, so we literally got to, good. they were rolling. Uh, yeah. You just, you know, Meadow Golf, Redneck Golf, it's called, um, you know, the, the person in you rotate. So you pick uh, the first hole and you say, okay, we're going to tee off from here. We're going to that tree. And then however many shots it takes you to hit that tree or the rock or whatever it is that you're aiming for. So, um, Big Pete ended up winning, but it was fun because I got to ride and ride with him, and it was just like riding in a real golf cart, you know, and the wasabi uh, side by side. <laughs> it was just perfect. Oh, so, um, and then uh, we played Cub, you know, that new, yeah, new game, game. New game yeah. to me. It's a freaking ancient game from Sweden, uh, but that was a blast. Um, we never busted out the cornhole boards. What? Yeah, they stayed in camp. I don't know. We were. Did, was did you guys have the globe, the the light, the night light going? Or well, no, I got the the Devos, um, oh, the Devos you know, the right. Light Ranger uh, thing there that works really well. And then I had my Dewalt light and the awning of the kitchen stadium. Real small kitchen stadium this year. It was perfect. Only one camp chef stove, and I mean, we we're basically cooking for four. Um, but then Rodney joined us. Tom Rosa came in and joined us, and then uh, Big Pete. Um, joined us and then you know the plates joined us for a couple nights so uh -huh. you know we had people coming and going camp host uh, came in so um, but anyways Thursday was a very relaxing day I just chill uh, kayaked a little bit in the afternoon and um, and then Friday um, what did we do Friday oh Tom came into camp Tom and Victoria ah. um, so we went out on a ride um, that basically a road below Meadow Lake Road going in did he bring uh, his so, Bronco or just the side by side no just the golf cart ah. um, so we went down to Weber Falls okay. and um, yeah we did that on Sunday that's that's the other thing we did on Sunday was Weber Falls um, but we went back out there on Friday and uh, showed a few people that never been there, and then we looped back on this road below Meadow Lake Road. So it was like a twenty-seven mile, thirty mile round trip from camp. So it was a good putt, rescue to explore. We talk about that. Um, and then uh, Saturday was, you know, we went back down the trail to Winchill Four and back up, and uh, played around a little bit there, and. Um, just started cleaning things up and hanging out in camp and played some more cub and kayaked and cacked. Yeah. And then Sunday, 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 yesterday we, uh, packed up. It was raining. So we got some serious, uh, rain the nights before uh -huh. on Saturday night, it sprinkled off and on. And then it sprinkled a little bit yesterday morning, but not bad. And uh, uh, it was nice because I thought, oh man, if it's dumping rain while we're packing up, that's just really sucks. But, <laughs> Everything's wet, yeah. Yeah, but we were good. Got everything packed up, got out of there, and uh, yeah, it was just just under three hours from the lake to my house in Minden, which was a very pleasant drive. Nice. Um, didn't have to do the the ruts too bad on eighty. I just had to go up eighty a little oh, those bit are, to Reno and those down. are horrible, dude. Oh. They're horrible. I when I drove from uh, your house to my mom's like a few weeks ago, and then you know, from my mom's back down to the Bay Area, I was like, I just stayed in the left lane. Those ruts are tragic. Yeah, it's so bad, especially when you're towing. Um, so, yeah, made it home, and it was so nice to come in the driveway, and I didn't have to fight off traffic or anything, trying to unload and move stuff around. And I got I got everything unloaded, did four loads of laundry, um, cleaned I mean, I got 98% of the stuff done yesterday, which was awesome. Right on. Well, that's cool. Yeah. That's your dream. I know it was one of your big big goals for having this place up there was to have enough space where you could, A, park your shit without having to block the road or, or fight like you just yeah. mentioned for parking. Because your old place, is, it, I complain about it every time I come down there. It's like, because you were right by the park there and all the people that didn't want to pay to park in the park would park in your neighborhood or all the surrounding neighborhoods, which is, I just think is just really un, un, uh, uncool. Well, it's just like golf balls coming in your yard. If you live next to the golf course, you know, it's just part of the deal. But, uh, yeah, it was so nice. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's really good. So yeah. And then we got rain. I got everything done before the rain started last night. And, um, yeah, only thing I was missing was my hot tub. I got to get a hot tub going up here. <laughs> I <can't laughs> well, miss my hot tub. You have a jetted tub in your bedroom, don't you? The master bath. <laughs> I do. I do. I, I didn't though, even right? think about that. 
<laughs> I didn't even think about that. Lorenzo, I think, already tried that out. There's probably a bunch of hair in there. I'm going to have to Jeez. clean that thing. Maybe I'll give it a whirl tonight. I save your donkey. Oh. Uh, so, <laughs> so, anyways, I, I know uh, you're going to hear some of these same stories, but with uh, with other people involved, so it's not going to be uh, totally verbatim. No. Um, but uh, we we got a little tuned up doing our uh, second annual whiskey blind whiskey tasting. We had six uh, whiskeys to try, and. It was. It really threw me for a loop on a couple of them, and there was one that unanimously none of us liked, and that was the one that screwed me up the night before. This, uh, <laughs> this, this, this law about that. Yeah, that was that was some. It is smoky, and it uh, mm. it was hot, and um, and none of us liked it. Blind tasting, so it, it reaffirmed that my palate's still good. Who brought it? Um, uh, that was a uh, Dave. He bought like this grab bag you know it's like a mystery bag at at his local purveyor Uh and so it was like three bottles for a hundred bucks or something um so he didn't pay a ton of money for the bottle which is good um but it it was unanimously not good well that's good for one thing only right (laughs) Uh, so (laughs) you want to get hammered in a in a hurry it's that's your go-to yeah (laughs) <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, the Costco, Costco small batch came in top three. Oh, again, huh? that's yeah. good stuff. I'm, looking I'm at telling that on you my for 20 right bucks, 20 bucks. Yeah. You can't beat it, man. And it's a liter. So it's cheaper than a 750. Uh, man, even a liter of cola and a liter oh, of that. And you're that's golden. right. Golden. You're definitely golden. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, so I, I didn't want to record while we were doing the tasting because there's a lot of dead spots and stuff, yeah. and a lot of editing for you. So we just, we tasted and then we recorded the podcast and talked about, went through each one. So um, I think it went pretty well, you know, let us know, give us a call and, uh, or hit me up on the IG at Wheelie Wine and Whiskey and let me know what your uh, your thoughts are. But uh, I'm curious if anybody else has tried this, this Laws uh, single, <laughs> single bag batch whatever it's um it was it's gear gear oil harsh it's harsh man harsh (laughs) i haven't had it yet so i can't comment no you don't just count yourself lucky you weren't there to taste that one (laughs) so so we ready to roll that little yeah let's do it all right boom all right we are here at meadow lake 2023 end of our trip which is a week after trek and we've got quite the uh the entourage here. We've got uh, uh, Samurai James and Lady Samurai. How's it going? Hello. There we go. And then we got uh, Tom over in the corner there. Hello. How you, how you doing? You're awfully quiet. Try again. Hello. Why is your mic off? Ah. There it goes. Okay, there you go. Now Hello. You're on. There you go. Oh, you're good now. <laughs> All right, so that was Tom. And then we got... Uh, Code of Code Nose and Law Firm. How you doing? Doing great. How is, I hope everybody's doing great. Not as good as we are, but I hope you guys are all doing good. And then we've got uh, Tamarosa. Howdy. Happy trails, y'all. Hey, there we go. All right. So we got uh, five of us here. No, six of us, counting me. <laughs> we just did a whiskey tasting. We'll get into that in a minute. That was kind of fun. Our second annual whiskey tasting. We didn't do it last year. Um, but let's let's take it from the top and let's talk about the actual Cal Four Wheel Trek 2023. Uh, James, Rhonda, and I were here for the uh, whole event, and uh, we'll give a quick recap on that. Um, so, what did you guys think of uh, Trek 2023? Uh, Trek was amazing. Um, there was a lot of people that showed up uh, this time around. Uh, a lot more than last year, I would have to say. And uh, people showed up in uh, numbers to support Cal Four Will, who fights a good fight for us to keep our trails open. Yeah, for sure. Um, the attendance was huge. I, I I haven't heard exact numbers, but I'm saying a thousand plus is pretty uh, pretty accurate. I would say so. I I think there's rumor mills going around that uh, we broke some records. Broke some records, uh, both in the bank, the bar, and um, and raffle. Right. So that's pretty good. There was a ton of raffle prizes. Um, 
it, camp was hopping on Saturday. I was in the vendor booth on Saturday, and it was really uh, hopping. I mean, I saw a ton of people. It was great. Uh, reconnected with some uh, old friends. Uh, I've been coming up here for a few years, and then uh, got to meet a lot of new people. So um, that was that was outstanding. Um, what uh, you? When did you arrive? Uh, you know, for considering how things went, I still felt we got back at a decent time. I think we were. Oh, right. When did you arrive to the event? No, oh. when did you arrive to the event? Oh, crap. James? Not on Saturday. No. No, because you came in way late on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were uh, talking okay. about Saturday. I yeah. screwed that all up. Yeah, you did. <laughs> all right. Um. So, got here, what, Thursday night? Thursday night. Yeah. James yeah. got here Thursday night. I came in Friday night. Yeah, and I came in Friday afternoon. Right. So, uh yeah, and it was hopping. When I drove in, I was like, holy smokes, the meadow was full. Uh, all the lake camps were full. And I go, hey, this is going to be a gonna be a rocking event. Yeah, luckily, uh, Uncle Jesse had the red carpet laid out for us. He did. He saved us a spot, so that was nice. Uh, we, were, we were right across from the uh, main camp in the meadow. Yeah, I thought it was extremely convenient. Worked out pretty good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we were in. Uh, uh, so I, I right Friday, and then uh, man, there was a, a long line for dinner, just like the old days. So it was uh, if you didn't get in early, you were waiting for a while. Yeah, I would say if you got in at the back of the line late, you were probably looking at a thirty minute wait. At easy. least at least a thirty minute wait, but it was worth it. Um, full salad bar, and then uh, what was uh, what did we have that night? Was that uh, was it? It was ribs. Was it ribs? It was ribs and chicken. Oh, that's right. Salad bar because um, John, uh, the chairman, came up to me and said, "Hey," um, and uh, I said, "Hey, we we need some dinners run down to the crew on windshield." Oh, floor. that's right. Yeah, I said, I'll do it. <laughs> so we got moved up to the front of the line to eat and then run dinners down to uh, windshield four. So that was that was cool. Yeah, that was pretty cool of you to. Run that down there, hardworking people out there, yeah, volunteering their yeah, time. Yeah, it was uh, Ozzy and I ran, oh, yeah. uh, ran meals down. Nice. So that was cool. We had, we, we had to run in, uh, run upstream a little bit. A uh, couple people on the trail coming up and getting drugged. Uh, saw Eddie, Black Eddie. Oh, Black Eddie, that's Black right. Eddie was, in the bomber. He was dead at the bottom of Windshield 5. That sucked, but they were uh, dead towing him up. Um, there was another rig with that, that broken axle, a gladiator. Uh, I don't think it had traction boards. No though, traction boards? But it, it broke an axle right at the top of five, right when I was right there. And I'm like, okay, I'm going around this. Those mess. are some heavy rigs, man. Yeah. And then uh, then there was nobody from the bottom of five to the top of four. So we were able to motor down to four, and there was a dead rig getting pulled up number uh, four. Um, so that was, uh, we got down there, and uh, I go, hey, we got dinner for you guys. And they're like, okay, you know, one guy came up and took all the dinners from us, and we said, okay, we're getting ahead of this this mess right here. Right. The slow drag up uh, the four to, to five. And we were able to shoot back up. And by that time, Eddie was already at the top of five. And, um, yeah, so that was awesome. Um, yeah. So uh, he prefers to be called Black Eddie. We need to make that clear because uh, that's that's who he is and that's that's what he is. And he's freaking hilarious. I, I have barely met the guy and I never laughed so hard. He, he's great. Um, he's building a, a 4,400 bomber car. He's going to oh, no go kidding. race those guys. He's, he's helped out a lot with racing. So he's got a trail uh, bomber and a uh, race, right. race bomber. He's going to build a race bomber. Wow. Yeah. And Eddie knows how to drive. And uh, those of you out there in the Ultra 4 land that, that know Eddie know exactly what we're talking about. <laughs> so we got back to camp, and it was a party uh, Friday night in camp. Band cranked up. Um, bar was going strong. What was that called? Meadow Magic? Mountain Magic? What did they call that, that drink? Oh, I don't know, but it was good. It was yeah. it, it was dangerous, too. It, it was coconut rum-based, and I, I wasn't a fan of it. I had one on Saturday just to try it, but uh, I was not a fan of the sweet uh, sweet drink there. But It got to me. I think it, that's the one I passed off, passed off to uh, Rhonda. Yeah, yeah. You liked it? I liked it. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> well, it was popular. A lot of people liked it. It was something different, you know? Right. Um, it's no replacement for Goat Smoke, but they were coming up with some some cool drinks. They actually had had antifreeze uh, that I got to try, which years ago they did antifreeze, 
uh, windshield wiper fluid and uh, ATF. Oh, wow. And, and those were all different flavor margaritas, basically, uh, that were really good. I thought it was trans shift neutral juice. Well, that's true. You know? the, the transgender uh, <laughs> shift neutral juice. Yes, uh, that's the stuff. Um, so then uh, Saturday, I mean, it camp kind of quieted down at midnight. It was like done. Oh, yeah. It, I felt like it kept quieting down like way early. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because years passed. I mean, it would be uh, camp would shut down around midnight, but then other camps around main camp were going till going strong two, three in the morning. Um, but then uh, Saturday morning, great weather was awesome, um, and it just you know people were you rolled out on your run at uh, what eight thirty nine o'clock. Oh uh, yeah, that was a huge mess. Um, the uh, flyers had the wrong start time, had the wrong start location. Uh, typically it's, uh, meet up at 7 a.m. and wheels up at 8 and, uh, right there at main camp. And instead they had it at, um, uh, line up at 8 out at Winchell 5. Oh, and, yeah. And, uh, you know, wheels up at 9. So it was kind of a, kind of a mess to start out the day. Well, yeah, but there was a good group. You had about 30 vehicles or so? It was 19 participants and four trail crew. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. You got the exact numbers. Yeah, it fell off pretty good, which is, you know, great for me. And uh, luckily for me, I had a couple people that weren't able to make it this year who were supposed to be part of the trail crew, but uh, other people stepped up big time, uh, like uh, Morgan and Dave. I got to yeah. give a sh- big shout out and to Jimmy Jet was Jimmy. in Jimmy, Jimmy Jet was there. Yeah. And, and Eric Hanna jumped and, in with, with Jimmy. 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 Yep. 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 So uh, luckily... You know, I, I got some good friends around me who uh, came to help help me out. So Yeah, we expected you back at camp around 2-ish or so, and you were still out there. What the heck happened? Well, it actually went pretty good. So, uh, you know, going down, um, considering the late start, not getting moving until 9 o'clock, we still made committee by lunchtime, so that was awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, so we made really good time down, didn't normally have lunch, and then driver's meeting afterwards. So we kind of positioned... Some of the rigs that might have a little bit more trouble, you know, in with some bigger rigs or some veterans so they can help them out coming back up. Right. And uh, so we started our way back up. Um, things were going pretty good until we got to Windchill 4. And then it was, you know, it was going good until until it didn't. Yeah. Um, we had a guy, man, I can't remember the names, but uh, they were actually in my run last year. And they have a really well-built JK uh, the guy takes great, great pride in his rig. Okay, uh, always makes it make sure it's in good working order. And then on top of that, uh, he's not afraid to uh, you know winch somebody up or help out, guide or spot. You know, super great team player. And uh, he was right there to the squeeze point on uh, bottom of four, and he realized he lost a lower link. Oh uh, no way! Driver side. So I pulled Bracket up. Bracket or the link uh, broke? Uh, the, it was actually a bad weld. It split right at the weld. Didn't hurt the frame at all or anything like that. It just came apart at the weld. And so he, you know, he flags me down. He's like, hey, you know, James, come take a look at this. And so I crawl under there, under there with them, and we're looking, and I'm like, oh, that's no good. And I'm like, well, I don't have a welder in the group. Let me see if I can uh, rustle up one. And uh, right as we were, you know, getting ready to crawl out the vehicle, I looked to my right side, and the lower passenger link was hanging by a thread oh as well. Oh, boy. So, basically, both lower links were off. Were, uh, oh, they, boy. They were done, and it just, you know, it was just a bad weld. It didn't get penetration or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So, um, luckily, I got on the phone to uh, uh, Tyler, who was running uh, main camp. Comms. Com- yep, running comms, communications, and he was able to talk to uh, Chai Bun. Oh, okay, yeah. Sue and Chai. And uh, he uh, grabbed one of his welders and uh, the one bun of his... trail bun, welder. Yeah, the bun trail welder. And he, uh, him and two other guys worked their way down. Oh, that's cool. And uh, came down and they took care of uh, the lower links. They had them weld them up. Uh, they had them weld them up pretty quick. You know, Chai is really on top of it. And uh, right in the middle as, uh, you know, we're like, okay, we can still work people around and... Uh, the first guy to go around the broken rig, he, uh, I think it was a Jeep Scrambler. I'm pretty sure it was a Scrambler. 
With traction boards? Uh, no, no traction board oh, okay. boards. Uh, that's gladiators. Oh, okay. Oh, we uh, got like two rigs up before. Yeah, we got a couple rigs up. I think we had a total of seven rigs up. And uh, he went around them and sheared a uh, main pin on the leaf spring. Oh, centering pin. Centering pin for the leaf spring. Okay. And uh, so, and sheared it right next to him. So it was at that point. Oh, so then you were, you were roadblock. We, we, we were done. I mean, it was just at that point, you know, the axle had shifted. Luckily, it didn't break anything. Luckily, it didn't tear the no drive line. No brake lines or anything. No brake lines, no drive lines okay. went bye bye. So okay. it was like, okay, um, you know, Jimmy sprung into action along with Dave and Morgan, and they started assessing that situation. And since I had seven rigs who had made it up for at that point, I was like, okay, it's no, there's no point for these guys to sit here and wait to figure out what's going right. on. So I ran them up to the top of five, got them out, and then turn around and head back down to help with the broken rigs. Oh, okay. All so right. um, at that point, we got back down there. Uh, they had that situation pretty well in hand. They had hooked up a winch to it, the axle. That had shifted, winched it back into place, and then ratchet strapped it in place. Sure. Uh, it was really, really a nice job. And then we were trying to figure out, I think I was getting ready to come down to tell him out. And uh, uh, this gentleman named Sean came up to me and said, hey, if you guys need a hand, I have. it would be real easy for me to drag him off the trail. Okay. And I said, uh, okay, uh, what kind of rig you got? You know, Are you sure you're able to pull something like that up? Windchill three, that's a pretty big, or windchill four, that's a pretty big rig. And he goes, oh yeah, uh, I got the Titan, and that's when he came mm. down with that humongous FJ, the monster, the monster, and uh, he was able to hook up to that scrambler. He pulled that thing out up past windchill four without even chirping a tire. Awesome. I mean, that was awesome for him to step up and offer to help like that. So. So, yeah, that was your delay, but uh, you made it back to camp. Uh, what time did you make it back to camp? I think we still got back to camp like around 5, 36. No, it? no, it was, was 6, 30 to 7. Yeah. We, oh, got in the, we got dinner at 7, yeah. so it was probably like 6, 45-ish. Because you guys got in just before we started the uh, program. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember seeing you come up uh, the hill, and then I was like, oh, they're here, okay. And then John and I started uh, announcing uh, for the evening, so... Wow. Okay. Well, that was quite the Saturday River run. Yeah, it was. It was good. But uh, Tyler said uh, he mentioned that we probably had the two worst breaks. Out I was going to uh, say I out think, of the trip. So yeah, it, it went pretty smooth. The earlier runs on Thursday and Friday went well. Um, few of the common breaks, but uh, but nothing too bad. And they were able to keep people moving uh, up the trail. But uh, yeah, Saturday you you came to, to have the luck for. Yeah, and you know it's it's you know we don't want to break. You know that's not what we intend to do. But uh, to be able to problem solve and have everybody come together to uh, solve the problems and get everybody off the trail is also mag magnificent. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So then, uh, so Saturday in camp was rocking. Uh, we got a little shower, just a, just a little raindrops here and there, uh, but the vendor show was going off. I tried to make it around to all the vendor booths. I couldn't. I, I was inundated at our booth. Um, we had a DFF Fab Anthony with us. Oh, that's right. Um, so he has some pretty cool hardware on the on the table. Um, and then, of course, we had the dirtbag awning and, and uh, representing Johnny. Johnny, unfortunately, couldn't have been here, be, uh, be there. So uh, I, I sold uh, quite a few of his hats, and we gave out a ton of stickers. Um, that and, big zip sweatshirt's always pretty popular. Well, yeah. So Renee got one of those. He had one specially packed for her, um, but he just had hats to sell. And then, um, then we had the elements and uh, did did quite a bit of elevator speeches on the on the element. A lot of people are looking at it like, what the heck is this thing? Uh, so it was cool. It was good um, educational uh, piece there and got people aware of of the element fire extinguisher. And we sold quite a few too, so that was good. Um, so then, uh, yeah, I was exhausted and then had to grab dinner and then MC that night. Right. Which was, uh, absolutely hilarious. You did, you guys did a great job. We had fun. John and I, John Allen, uh, chairman of the event, John and Renee, Renee stood off to the side. I tried to give her the mic, but she wouldn't take it. But, uh, uh, it was great. We had a lot of fun with it and, uh, 
kept things moving. Uh, we can always improve, but I, I think this this year went really smooth. And um, uh, you know, we probably could have shaved off another ten fifteen minutes, but uh, but it, it went it went good. We had a lot of entertainment, and the trivia questions uh, were good, popular again. So that was good. And the auction, man, you guys killed it on the auction. Man, the auction. So we had uh, Dolly, uh, Hannah, and Sarah helping us out. Uh, work the crowd and the first thing we auctioned off was the bench and it was just a a wooden you know piece of log that was cut slabbed right you know the top was cut off so it was flat and then they spray painted a couple sierra trek logos on it and then had a couple small logs underneath that kept it upright and uh, that thing sold for 500 bucks wow (laughs) it was a great starter of the event very good starter (laughs) we had a lot of generous people uh with deep pockets uh that night so the fireplace man that that was one of my favorites that was tyler i think that went for just under 700 bucks right yeah Hashtag Tyler money. So um, that was great. And then he donated the uh, the 10 trivia question prizes. So Oh, that's right. Had the uh, Morflate uh, tool bags and then a couple of the, um, what does he call them? STDs, the single tire deflator. Yeah, I <laughs> so, think that's right. So that he had a couple of those to hand out. So that was cool. Um, so... Yeah, so we finished the program up around nine o'clock. Oh, we we gotta we gotta include probably the favorite, which was the uh, the t-shirt bid. Oh, oh yeah, so, so Trevor gun. Trevor from WFO had the t-shirt cannon, so he was launching this thing. He kept pumping up the the CO two on this thing, and and they were flying high and uh, uh, strong. And then so I told uh, Trevor, I said, Hey, would you be uh, willing to take a shot? Uh, for a donation for Cal for Will. He goes, heck yeah. And so I said, okay, well, we don't want to shoot you in the chest because you could break a rib with that thing. Yeah, that thing would hurt. So how about if we uh, have somebody auction, we'll auction off for somebody to shoot you in the ass. And uh, he's like, I'm all for it. Well, uh, so we, we did the, the the bidding and everything, and Danny, that used to work for Trevor at WFO, uh, Red Wet Willie, he's got his own fab shop now out of Forest Hill. Uh, he ended up paying $200 to shoot uh, Trevor in the ass. Yeah, I happened to be next to next to him when he was bidding. He's like, I'm not missing out on this. Oh, yeah, so good, so good. So when I saw Danny bidding, I'm like, okay, he's got to win this thing, and he did. Um, so that was good. Two hundred dollars to uh, Cal Four Wheel for uh, charity there, and uh, Trevor took it. Took one for the Every, team. Everything for a good cause, you know. Yeah, yeah. So the the crowd enjoyed that. That was fun. Um, and uh, yeah, then the band uh, cranked up and started going, and then uh, oh my god, I was so tired, but I got talked into doing a night run down the trail. So we went down five. Uh, Ozzy, uh, Keith, and Melissa Silva from. Uh, EV uh, oh, yeah, evolve test racing 10. the test ten, um, and there was a couple other people, but they peeled off at uh, at the bottom of five. Anyways, so we went down to the bottom of four, and then had some other group go past us. Horton was there. Horton was uh, funny. He's always fun on a night run. Uh, they were heading down to three, and I said, I don't want any part of that because uh, it, it's you know that'll be a long night. And so I thought, okay, we'll just go to the bottom of four, come up. And so we started heading back up four after they got through and Ozzy gets on the radio and he says, we got problems, major problems. And I'm like, what? And, uh, unfortunately Keith and Melissa's Evolve Racing team, uh, was shut down. They were dead mechanically in the water, dead, um, in the middle of windshield four. Yeah. Didn't, uh, he was having issues with that brain unit, uh, for the rig and he, uh, Said that uh, the computer pretty much lost its tune. If it I lost remember. everything. Yeah, yeah, there's no tune. It just, it just, control alt delete. It was done. <laughs> control alt. The binary code was was all zeros. Uh, so he was he was dead in the water, literally. Um, so I did a dead pull on him. I winched. Uh, got my rig, my buggy, right up against the tree at the top to anchor me because that's a heavy freaking rig. That's a big rig. 12,000-pound shitty built came through again. I cannot believe how well that winch did. Did a dead pull, um, and I had almost all my line out to get to him, which is a good thing when you're doing a straight pull like that. You have the most power of your winch and pulled him up to the top of four. That's incredible. And then we turned around, and then Daisy changed, so I was hooked to... um, uh, Keith and Melissa's truck there, and then uh, Ozzy was hooked to the front of me, and we pulled him up. 
and it was going good. He got his steering working because it's electric steering. He had power, but it just the the communications were not happening there. Uh, so he was able to get his steering going, and I go, dude, don't get electrocuted because I don't want you to be the first guy to be electrocuted on windshield four. Uh, so we got him uh, going, got the steering. So that helped, but it was it was just dead weight. And we got to that up to the top of four, around the corner where it widens out, and then this freaking turn. Jason's corner. Yeah, my corner that just gave me hell all weekend, and uh, I tapped out. I couldn't go anymore. I was mentally and physically exhausted. Well, it was like one in the morning. One o'clock in the morning, and uh, with everything that had been going on in my world, and then all day Saturday, and I was just done. I'm like, dude, I am making poor decisions right now, and it's not going to get any better. I got to get out of this situation. Uh, But the uh, grim jeepers came down and uh, were helping at that point. So I was like, okay, I didn't leave him out on the trail because I don't know. Like he had a lot of help. He had a I lot of help. Keith, I go, dude, I'm sorry, but I got to tap out. And um, they understood. And so we went up, got back to camp. I was in bed by like one thirty, one forty five ish. I guess they didn't show up to camp till, um, till about uh, four thirty, almost five o'clock in the morning. So I'm going to throw you on the bus here. Uh, when did you notice the bars were bent in the back? Uh, just prior to that. Oh, okay. Yeah, just prior to that. So, um, so we got back to camp. They got back to camp the next morning. You know, that was like, okay, good, you made it up. And uh, you know, it was Sunday morning of uh, of trek, so everybody was just getting breakfast and then heading out. And uh, camp cleared out pretty quick. Um, we got Keith and Melissa loaded up on their trailer, and uh, they headed out down the road. Yeah, that. I mean, just to give you guys an idea how heavy that rig is, uh, Jason was doing the main pull, and we know Jason's rig is pretty good size, but the fact that that rig was pulling him, and I had to get my buggy to dead man. To anchor. To anchor his buggy in place to pull that up the trailer. So we snatch blocked off the front of his trailer yeah. with the winch, and then to pull his truck up on the trailer. Yeah, that thing's and, heavy. Uh, yeah, it was dragging, <laughs> dragging my buggy. Um, so anyways... Um, yeah, it was good. So everybody uh, started heading out. Camp got torn down quickly, uh, cleaned up, and uh, and then we were able to um, settle down and relax and start our, our week long of uh, hanging out at Meadow Lake. Yeah, there's nothing be- better on Sunday than when you wake up and you're having breakfast and you're just watching every all those trailers banging and clanging on the way out, knowing that you're going to have the place to ourselves, you know? Right, right. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, a very successful Trek 2023. Um, it was my 34th Trek, I believe. Um, so yeah, I'd seen it all. Um, so we need to, uh, bring in, uh, Mr. Walters here. Um, you got a microphone over there, Tommy? I do now. Oh, yeah, there you go. So, uh, Tom and I met here, uh, fighting for the same camp spot at the point, uh, Trek many, many moons ago and. 1990-ish, uh, I guess. Uh, what's your favorite Trek story, Tom? <laughs> Putting you on the spot. Because we got some great Trek stories. <laughs> this could Boy. be ugly. Um. This could be. This could be good. <clears throat> Dave's been coming. How many Treks have you been coming to, Dave? I think this is either my 22nd or 23rd year. I've missed a couple, but I've been coming, yeah, 23 years now. Yeah. Yeah, so wow. you've got some history here, too. Maybe Thanks to the Walters. Here. There you go. I would tell you, Prime, I mean, there's many, many good stories. Start, I started coming in 89. 89, But yeah. probably one of my favorite trips would be my parents came. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was cool. They they were pretty blown away by the whole yeah. operation. Because well, because you and um, the whore lady were. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> on the third, taking photos on the third, the third floor of the oh, uh, brothel. Oh, okay. So yeah, let's clarify this. Yeah, let's yeah, get let's, this clarified here. The, the, the whore lady is my uh, daughter-in-law. Is your daughter-in-law is uh, Taylor's uh, yeah wife? Uh, so. We, <laughs> oh wow! We got into the uh, oh, yes. what's what's storied as the three story, uh, three story whorehouse that used to be a whorehouse, uh, down the hill. It's quite a ways uh, down from camp. Remember, if you do have a cabin up here, don't leave a key back, no. or we're gonna find it. No, we we found the key. We were totally respectful, but we got inside. <laughs> 
and we looked and and then um yeah there was some some uh, seductive paintings and stuff on the wall and everything and uh yeah the uh your your daughter-in-law posed up there and i took a picture of her that was hilarious <laughs> yeah 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 but uh, sierra truck 50 shades of gray it is it is <laughs> there's there's so much history up here uh, with Summit City and the mining and the mines that we still come across and all the tailings, all the test holes. Um, you know, uh, there's there's one cabin that we have pictures next to when it was standing and now it's totally flattened. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, that, that's over by Catfish Pond. Um, yeah, so a lot of a lot of great uh, great times up here. All right, so I'm afraid to ask uh, what, what another memory here, but <laughs> <laughs> what do you got, Dave? You got anything? I just remember when the parties here used to be just freaking insane. Like you said, that thing would end about 11 or 12 at main camp. Yeah. And then the freaking camps would just go up to 2, 3 in the morning, even louder than Loud. main camp. Horns it it was insane. Yeah. Shout out to Jesse Jones. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, there was, there was, it was, it was almost King of the Hammers esque back in the day it where really it was, was. The quiet time was about between three a.m. and uh, five thirty a.m. or so uh, here. But this boy, it must be an older crowd now because everybody was like at midnight. It was starting to really quiet down. The shout out to everybody. If you do want to die and see things you've never seen. Tell Tommy you want to go on one of his famous death hikes. Yeah, right, right. The death march. <laughs> Just so you guys know, Tommy will take you on a hike to places you've never seen over terrain you don't think you can go over, and he says it's nothing. But we've seen things that you can't see anywhere else. I give him that. Props. Yeah, we finally found the English Dam. The English the Dam. Years. After five years. Almost died. Yeah, almost died. Olsen tapped out. Olsen with the, uh, if you hear two gunshots, yeah. just keep going. And we heard two gunshots. He fired his gun twice. He's on out. <laughs> FYFF. FYYFF. Oh, Shout out is. to Olsen, too. Oh, Missed oh that, my gosh. Missed that bastard. Yeah. Code Nelson uh, Law Firm there. Um, yeah. And uh, I remember, uh, Tom, you had the, uh, was it M- MDT uh, Broncos? Yeah. MDT Broncos. So, yeah. So you were like, Anytime somebody broke on the trail, he'd leave camp and go fix somebody and get them back up to camp. And you did more trail time over those years than uh, I think most of the uh, the old timers that ran this trail for fifty years, you know, because you'd run that trail about ten or twelve times in in a weekend. I don't remember the year, but one year I ran it three times in one day. Yeah, three times Jeez. in one day. It was insane. That Bronco, uh, yeah, you had your Bronco going from sunup to sundown, <laughs> way past sundown. I was with Kevin Dill on that. Oh, that's uh, right, that Kevin trip. Dill. Yeah. yeah, he was my right seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. Um, yeah, so you fixed a lot of people. You broke a lot of stuff on this trail too yourself. Yep. I think one of my my fondest memories of us doing the trail is Winch Hill One, and uh, we were coming up. And you dislodged a rock with your passenger rear tire on the right side wall of one, and it fell right into your Bronco. It was a large rock. I mean, it was good two by two diameter, I would say, maybe bigger. It was the size of Volkswagen it because was, it, it hit was, the top of the Bronco. That's right. It hit the roll cage and then rolled right into your rear quarter panel. Oh, and, yeah. And you go, what do I do? And I go, there's no choice. You got to drive forward. And this rock fell right in the middle of the trail. It basically shut down the trail. Um, and I had to winch that rock back. And it was almost round. I mean, I remember I was, we were worried about it rolling into my Jeep. And um, and so we winched it. And it rolled. And then it stopped like five feet from my Jeep. And it was just enough off the trail where we could get around it and get up windshield one. But that was back when uh, the camp host had a VHS and recorded it on VHS. I don't, I don't know if it's been converted over to DVD. I kind of think it has. I still have it. Do you have it? You know where that video is? Because I'd love to see that video uh, again. Alexis just moved it. Oh, the horror. I mean, <laughs> that's horror. Just moved it. I'm not it. sure you're supposed to call we your daughter-in-law the horror. <laughs> To um, oh God. <laughs> DVD. She did. She did all the. the oh, did she? Over. All the yes. tra- okay. And uh, that would be a fun one to that to watch. video is it has Austin in it yelling at me, saying I need to get a new paint job. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And the dents are still in the Bronco too. They're still there. Right? Yeah, they're still there. That's a, that was a good one. Uh- <laughs> sorry, like sorry. Somebody. Yeah, nice. 
It's all right. Chris can edit out or not. Um, yeah, no, a lot of lot of good uh, good memories up here on the trail, and uh, it's it's funny to watch how we've um, our rigs have evolved from uh, thirty one ten fifties to uh, forty three stickies, and uh, yeah. You've been, you've rebuilt your Bronco recently, so uh, hopefully next year it'll be back out on the trail and uh, can uh, can uh, go out and have some fun with us. That's the push. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's there the we push. go. So, um, any other stories, Dave, that you can think of before we? Because uh, there's there's several. <laughs> just just more like. We, we saw it this week, the thunderstorms up here. It's like yeah. every single time there's a thunderstorm, there's always a story. We either, if we're out on the trail shooting, clearing logs, right. dodging freaking nickel-sized hail. Oh, was, that was like that was like golf ball hail when we were over there. I almost died that time, it felt like. Everybody's diving under rigs. I'm in my freaking quad getting pelted like a... Our, our easy up got destroyed. Yeah. Absolutely destroyed. We were up there at our, our shooting spot. Rains are coming. Rain are coming. And you could hear it. It sounded like a freight train. And we were like, what is that? And then uh, we looked off in a distance, and there was just a storm coming out of nowhere. A big black wall. And it was so loud and deafening, and I just distinctly remember tree branches snapping. That's how big the hail was. Yeah. And we're looking at each other and go, oh, crap. And then it started coming down. And you had to seek shelter. And I was in the middle of this easy up. Uh, Jim O'Leary, I, I got under him because he's way taller than I am. Um, and then people were diving. I remember Olsen, Olsen. diving underneath the, the Jeep. And, <laughs> and people, I don't know, were under tailgates. Anything you could find for protection because... Unless you had a quad. Yeah, and you had a quad. Yeah, then I was trying yeah. to hide under trees, and that wasn't working. I tried to run back, and it looked like I got shot about 100 <laughs> it times. Did. You had welts. I just had welts the whole you time when welts. I got back. That That's was fun. That's how bad it was. Uh, you were there, Tommy, no, right? Oh, you missed that, that year? I Miss that? Oh year. my gosh! Yeah, Metal so Lake, Jesse was there. Meadow Lake was steaming when we got That's back. That's right. So we th- we were thinking, oh my god, our trucks are going to be destroyed. Our vents on our campers are going to be destroyed. And uh, luckily, it missed main camp. It 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 rained and it hailed, but it wasn't the size of hail that we experienced coming up that canyon. Yeah, just that was phenomenal. That was. That it was, sounded like a freight train. Literally, we're yeah. in the middle of nowhere. We know there's no damn trains around here. But it sounded like a freight train coming yeah, through. Yeah, it was it was gnarly. Uh, yeah, you know what they say: if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes up yeah. here in the Sierras, and uh, definitely true. Uh, it is the power of nature, man, is in full force up here in the high Sierras. I mean, we're just over seven thousand feet here at Meadow Lake, and uh, you know we get up uh, we're going down the trail and stuff. But I mean, there's there's just uh, the peaks, Lacey Peak, we go up to. That was a good one too. We uh, we had breakfast up there and saw some hikers from Germany. Remember the uh, the the uh, the eclipse the about eclipse? five six years ago? That's had breakfast, right. got buzzed by a C seventeen. That's right. That's right. So we hauled our camp chef stove up there, griddle, and we did a pancake breakfast uh, in the morning to watch the uh, the solar eclipse. And uh, it was pretty spectacular. And there was people hiking because the Pacific Crest Trail's right there. PC. Uh, T trail and uh, holy smokes, it's so funny watching them come off the trail. And they're like, We're out here with a full entourage of, of breakfast, you know, camp chef stove, fresh and fruit, fresh fruit. And they were loving and beer, it. And they beer. love yeah. beer. You get an ice cold beer to somebody on the PCT, you got a lifelong friend, yeah, no doubt. So it was cool to hear their stories, uh, uh hiking that trail and stuff. But yeah, getting buzzed by the uh, the bomber there was pretty damn cool, that was freaking cool. That was good, um, yeah. You gonna say something, Tom? No, I'm just trying to think. Great memories. Yeah, trying yeah. To, if you guys haven't been up here, you have no idea what you're missing. This truly is a magical place. Don't tell anybody else, but <laughs> <laughs> this place is freaking awesome. Well, and it's like all the years we've been coming up here, we seem to find something new every year uh, to explore, uh, deal, or whatever. It's just like the trail we went on yesterday. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. I even know what you'd call that. The uh, the Perazzo Meadow Loop Trail or something. Something. Uh, Ford Explored or Exploder <laughs> yeah. Sunk in the Mud yeah. Trail. Yeah. GPS says something about Mount Lola. Mount Express Lola? Or something. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's a pretty established road, but it's cool terrain and uh, four wheel drive recommended. Uh, not a two wheel drive Ford <laughs> yeah. Explorer. Do not bring up a rental Ford Exploder. Holy smokes! You so will we, not make it through. Yeah, this 
so we came up. So we got some pretty good rains earlier in the week, and and things are still pretty moist up here. And there was a mud puddle that this Ford uh, Explorer got stuck in two wheel drive it rental. Deep. It was deep, but it had trail mode. It did have trail mode, <laughs> and uh, and so we came upon that, and uh, these two guys were uh, super thankful. Um, so I ended up winching them out with my buggy. And uh, and he tried to pay us a hundred bucks. I'm like, no, we don't want your money. Just pay it forward. Next time, help somebody else out. I'm just glad they broke down and like the birthplace of every single mosquito in California. Oh my god! Oh my god, dude, it was the so bad. The are bad, <laughs> but they, we all had off. We all had off. We we got we we hosed ourselves down with off. Yeah, bring Let's off when us. you come here. Yeah, yeah. This this year especially because of all the water and and how wet the winter was. I mean, it's like spring up here right now. It really is. Lake's the fullest I've ever seen it. More flowers than you've ever seen. Yeah, the flowers. The mule's ears are still going off. The lupin. Uh, Even at Lacey Peak, it's still full green. Lacey Peak's full green, and there's like 15 Fif- feet of snow mm-hmm. drifts oh, on the other it's side. Huge, huge. We took drifts. Uh, we took the plakes up there. They were here for a couple of days, and Glenn, of course, is, is skiing down it on his uh, shoes there um, and then made a snowman, snowman with a with a spike uh, a mohawk <laughs> um, of course but uh, yeah that was great they had uh, uh, their niece with them and uh, and she had a blast and we we went out to the shooting spot afterwards and did a little shooting um, yeah ran trail Wednesday so we went all the way down to windshield one and back up uh, river crossing two was pretty deep that was uh, that was it gnarly I'd yeah. It was flowing. I think we looked at Dream Flows, and it was somewhere in the uh, one one twenty five to one fifty five range. Um, but it was it was deep in the middle. There was a there was the hole that was hard to avoid, and uh, uh, oh, Big Pete with his uh, cow. Big Kawasaki. Pete his freaking hillbilly uh, pants. <laughs> yeah, he had his pants rolled up, and he he was up to like his uh, you know uh, calves uh, sitting in his side by side going across there. Um, but uh, it's got the snorkel and everything. It could have gone in way deeper water, but Pete just didn't want to get wet. So he took off his <laughs> shoes, rolled up his pants, and drove through. Um, uh, Glenn was concerned because their air intake's low on, uh, on their buggy. And so he ended up disconnecting the, the fan so it wasn't throwing water up. Uh, on the intake, and that worked out to get them across. Can't forget the pre-running, though. That yeah. Pre- pre-running was Oh, yeah, the awesome pre-running with the two sticks? Yeah, yeah, with the two sticks. So, yeah, yeah Glenn actually walked across the river uh, with two sticks, and he was up to his crotch um, <laughs> at one point. He is insane. <laughs> and that those rocks are slippery, man. I'm like, oh, my gosh. But, yeah, he and that water was freaking cold. <laughs> I mean, well, it was probably 38 degrees or oh, something. Oh, yeah, just I pure mean, snow melt. It was all just Ice, cold, 15 cold minutes water. before it hits you. Well, it's like Pete was saying. He goes, "That's that's the water deep down from Fort Ice, and it just it is just cold, cold ass water." Um, and uh, so we got down to the base of one and turned around, and uh, we just it was fun. We just kind of took our time that day, and uh, we stopped for lunch right there at uh, River Crossing Two, um, but uh, no mechanical issues. Uh, we played in some areas, and uh, yeah, just kind of just motored on through. Great day, like I said, I'd never down been past the river. I've been coming here twenty years. I can't believe never that you told me that river. you were riding right seat with me, and I was like, "How have you never seen past Winchell Four? Apparently, I don't have good friends. No, Apparently we always not. go to the committee. Usually, well, yeah, around. you gotta yeah. have you gotta have more than a rubber band douche coupe to go past. Well, there you go. Well, he's hey, taking hey, hey, he's taking his uh, four wheel quad did. down. I did take four. a quad all the way down, down from to three, all That's the way down wow. to the river wow. and back up. I will talk never do that. that again, but. Let's talk. Let's, let's talk about. Let's the talk day about that. Dropping off the let's hills and the boys that. holding them back. If it oh. wasn't for Tom's kids, you'd it, still be down there. L- literally, they did <laughs> save me. Uh, I was going over uh, Windchill Three, and there's not many bypasses for anything, and so I had to go down about a five foot straight drop on a uh, 750 brute force quad, which isn't five feet long. No. And so I was edging down, edging down, edging down, and right when I get to the bottom. Rear end starts going over, and I was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> and those are those things I are heavy. I thought I was gonna die because yeah, that thing weighs seven, eight hundred oh, pounds. Crazy. And luckily, Tommy's uh, sons and his friend 
grab the back rear rack of my uh, quad and stop me from going over because yeah. that would have been painful. Yeah. There's Didn't no they, doubt. Like, wow. Use a rope later to lower Yeah, the on the way up. No, on the way up, I had to tie a rope to the front of the quad because otherwise I was going to flip over yeah, going up the everything. Front, the front was starting to crawl up so, on yeah, you. So, yeah, they they walked me up, basically. It looked like they were walking me like a dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. So Finally, that was a shorter nice rope based in a Suzuki. Oh, oh, yeah. Because that took all them kids out of that Bronco that day. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, they I, worked their asses off too. Oh, we all worked our asses off, but yeah, they definitely saved me that, that day. That was many, hilarious. many times, and I'm still appreciative. I, I never. That laughed. was your one and only trip on that quad down that hill. Hell no, I'm not doing that twice. <laughs> I did that once. I'm like, <laughs> Done not once? that stupid. No, I was freaking sore for another <laughs> week. Oh my gosh, yeah, that was but that was good times. Did it man. once, never again. What year was that? <gasps> That's oh, gotta be. Was that I got like... it in 2005, and it's probably 2010 then. No, really? I think so. I think it's about right. 2010? Yeah, because so. your kids were, what, 16? And now yeah, they're well, 27, right. 29, 30. 20 30. Something years ago. 30. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. Holy smokes. We're old. Time flies. Yeah, you were a lot younger then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Who the hell would take a four-wheel drive quad down the trail? Dumbass. Code would. Yeah. Not I. <laughs> So, oh gosh, that's right. That was that was a good one. Um, I remember what a great Olson story. One of my favorite Olson stories of all time is he came up here and it was it a, a Barbie Jeep? Um, what Jeep did he have? He had originally? the blue one. The little I know it was blue, blue, but I think it was square headlight. Yeah, it was yes. uh, Jim Serb's old Jeep. Yeah. So it was a Barbie Jeep, uh, and it was basic. I mean, I think he might have had 33s on it or something. He outbid Brayton for it. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and so anyways, he came up there and, and camped with us, and we're like, come on, Olsen, you know, come. Well, this was the, the, the first time he had ever come down the trail with us. He was riding with Jesse or somebody. And so we went down Winchow 5, Winchow 4, and we stopped at the base of 4. And I go, Olson, what do you think? He goes, you guys are fucking insane. Yep. This is the most stupidest <laughs> thing I've ever seen in my entire life. What the hell are you guys doing? How the hell are we getting back to camp? I'm like, we're going to turn around and head back. There's no freaking way you Jeeps are going back up the trail the same way we just came down. He was freaking hilarious, but he was dead serious, too. He honestly thought we were not going to be able to get back to camp. And, uh, yeah, then we had to we had to show him that we could crawl right back up those windshields back to camp. And then here it was a year later, he bought that blue Jeep oh, and yeah. started joining us on the trails. Olsen was the party. I remember him dancing up here, talking oh, to everybody. God. He was the man. Yeah, he, he would get out on that dance floor Friday and Saturday <laughs> night and work the crowd. <laughs> Say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. He, 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 he had a good time drinking his VO. VO and water? VO and soda. VO and, VO and water. water. VO and water. Yeah. Poof. And a cigar. And he my, had a cigar. It was never lit. He'd just chop yeah, on that bastard all day. It. Just chew on it. What were you going to say? Uh, my last trip with Olsen was down to Winchell 3 and back in the Bronco. Uh-huh. And we had the um, Sierra Trek, uh, I don't want to use the name, with us. Okay. Passenger. Okay. And uh, we got down. It was a rough trip getting down there. And he was in the right front. She's in the back. Uh-huh. And uh, he spilled the ice chest in the back seat <laughs> uh, to get himself a drink. Okay. And that uh, she came up and said, how am I going to get it? How am I going to sit? She goes, he said the ice will, keep, will knock the swelling down. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, my. <laughs> that sounds like Olsen. Sounds like Olsen. Hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah, there's you know, so many, so many stories out there. Um, so back to uh, Windchill 1 there. Uh, we met the Washington guys coming. Oh, up. on on Wednesday. Yeah, on Wednesday. Yeah, so we this group came in. We we got down to the base of one and turned around, and here comes what five six rigs. Yeah, about that. Uh, from Washington, and so I handed out stickers. Said, "Hey, we're going to turn around, and head back up." And have you been here before? Nope. First time on the trail, and we're going to camp out on the trail tonight, and then head up to Meadow Lake the next day. And I'm like, "Okay, right on." Uh, I said, well, windshield one has a bypass, but you know, you need to do the windshield because it's a badass windshield and they had set up Jeeps, um, uh, you know, yeah, down. except for the last little, uh, red Barbie Jeep, man, that guy was on 35. So. Well, yeah. And, and, um, yeah, he had a V8 and everything, but it, it just, the wheelbase was not cooperating with him on that one obstacle. That, that one rock was just right there, just messing everybody up. I hit it too. It hung me up for a second. Um, 
but uh, yeah, Aaron uh, was there in his Jeep, and then uh, here comes Glenn. You know, he gets right in the mix and starts throwing rocks for him and guiding him up the trail, you know. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And I go, Aaron, do you know who that was? And he goes, oh, I know exactly who that was. That's really freaking cool. And he was a skier as well. So he uh, he had an interesting story with Glenn at Mammoth one time that I won't repeat here. Thank you. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, but they, they all bypassed it except for Aaron. And I can't remember the other guy's name. Tom or something I want to say his name was. Jack, Jesse, uh, something. I don't know. In the red Jeep. Uh, but we, we helped them get up, and then once they got up, then we hauled ass uh, up the trail. And we took off. Yeah, uh, we, we wanted to head back. Because at that time, it was like two-ish? It was getting later in the afternoon. It was getting later afternoon. And the rain it was, was coming. Two, two thirty. Yeah, rain, we were expecting rain about four. We, we were expecting a forecast of four thirty downpour, and we still had to play a little bit too. Actually. Yeah, and we wanted to go up to committee and play, and so uh, smooth sailing to committee. We played at committee, uh, crawled some of those walls and stuff there, had a blast, and then uh, then it was really starting to look dark, and we said we got to go. Yeah, went back to three. Still played a little bit at three. Uh, the Toyota made it up unbelievably you know he had the biggest jeep wave there ever was right um so that was yeah i think we all did one till three i think we took a stab at that wall that i uh uh did a little three wave action Pir- well pirouette yeah the pirouette so prior to that though we uh we saw joe chavez on the way down um the trail and uh so he's with the forest service and he had uh the spider Kevin was a spider operator. Yep. Um, that this machine was pretty freaking cool to watch work. Uh, so they were filling in some holes, moving some rocks and stuff, uh, working their way down the trail. And uh, we caught them at the top of windshield three going down, and they were doing some micro blasts. So they drilled That's holes, right. like pencil sized holes into the rock, and then dropped this charge. It looked like a little 410 shell. Um, a little longer. Yeah, but longer. Like a big... And, and dropped it into the hole and then had this... Um, uh, it, it basically was a pneumatic firing pin. It was a, a stainless steel shaft that went down into the hole uh, right on top of the charge, and then he'd fire it with uh, with air. And uh, it's pretty cool. I got a good video of a big piece of rock getting blasted off, uh, thrown through the air. Um, but anyway, so when we were coming back up, they were in the section uh, right below Turtle Rock, below Windchill 3. That's right. Uh, that we like to uh, uh, call that area Turtle Rock. I don't know if that's the official name, but that's what we, <laughs> we called it. What is <laughs> What are you doing, Dave? Dave? He's got the bug assault. Is that a is that a moth? Yep. Is dude, that a moth? Wait, dude, he's fire. got a laser <laughs> sight. Oh, he got it. <laughs> moth is done. He's got. We're in Dave's RV, and we got. He's got a bug assault gun with a with a a laser beam. He's got lasers. That's hilarious. That thing works. It took out that moth. That's impressive. If you don't have a bug assault gun, I don't. You're missing out. I'm telling you, they are freaking awesome. That's a pretty damn redneck right there. Is that okay. the side off your nine millimeter? Maybe. That's impressive. Um, so, anyways, we were coming up, and they were working on that section of the trail, and. Um, Yeah, when we were coming down three, James, you go, hey, I want to try this line to the left of um, what we will call the normal path. You got the box on three, just as you're going up three, the normal box on three to the left is like the main line now that's, you know, going up the rock um, uh, ledges and stuff. And then to the left of that is a crevasse straight up and down and that's what we call a uh, Coleman cooler uh, uh, challenge there why do you call it the Coleman cooler challenge uh, I don't know there was a couple years ago when I first got the buggy and I had the Coleman coolers on the bag the stainless steel Coleman coolers and uh, no water in the front tires and I stood it up straight up I was beyond straight up and down um, and the Coleman cooler is what saved my ass from going over backwards um, but yeah uh, Taylor was riding with me on that one yeah and we <laughs> like that was quite the photo, um, but uh, so you wanted to try it before they did any work filling in the bottom half. Yeah, I played it a little little bit on it the day before, and then I was hoping to try again um, before they filled it in. Yeah, and Rhonda had talked to him and said, "Hey, before you guys fill that in, you know, uh, 
I think James wants to give that a shot. And, you know, they kind of looked at my buggy and was like, uh, oh, yeah, we got to see this. You you go right ahead. And so I uh, jumped in the buggy and went down and gave it, you know, gave it some really good attempts. Uh, I think I was super close once or twice. And then uh, I think like the third time, third or fourth time I tried it, I ended up on uh, one wheel. Um, my driver left. Driver left, rear. Driver rear was uh, the only left tire on the ground. I you, was you pure wetted. You had three wheels in the air, and I was pretty far over backwards. And uh, luckily, I was able to cram it in reverse and was able to flip the throttle. Uh, it's nice having that V eight power, and it came right back down. Yeah, I think if you hesitated another second or two, you definitely would have been on your side. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, you put on a hell of a show there. So then, when we were coming back up now um we're like okay and i was was i leading that point i think you were um and so i think i was like third in line uh kimberly was second yeah and then i think i was third so i'm like okay well i gotta stick my nose in there and i'm like dave you want to go and he's like uh okay and then he really didn't have a choice right um so we we started up and i just stood the buggy up on him but with the water in the front it was planted it felt good you guys look stable yeah we were stable and stuff but i was watching the oil pressure just and I'm like, okay, back off. And then, you know, Glenn was there and uh, Big Pete, and they go, okay, try try over to the right. Okay, I'm going to try and catch that ledge. And you go in there, and then the rear tire would slip back into the hole, and the rear tire would slip into the hole. And I tried and tried and tried to heat up the tires and do it, but um, one of my last attempts, I heard the tick, 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 tick. I heard it too. Yeah, so it you were bad. back there. You could hear the hear the motor ticket. So I'm like, uh, I don't have any more oil pressure here. I got to get down off this thing. So... Um, came down and i said okay i i'm good um and then went up and then uh and then kimberly tried kimberly tried yep and she gave it some help she was too. close she, she was, was really close, close. The longer wheelbase um it got up on top of the ledge better uh but just couldn't get the traction to climb up right that uh the achilles heel on that one is your left rear just slips into that hole yeah. And that is one heck of a hole. It's super deep, super deep wall. And you're just, you're riding on your side wall, just trying to get traction and you just can't. And then, uh, and then you stuck your nose in, did it like one more time. And I'm like, all right, he's going to get it this time. And then you're like, nope, I'm done. Yeah. What I don't know what happened. Uh, you know, it, what was really funny is, uh, you know, when I pirouetted off that and kind of, you know, slammed down, I knocked that rock off the face there. Yeah. Um, even you came over. I think your hands were shaking worse than mine were. Dude, I thought for sure you were done um you know and it's just it's just one of those things where if you don't have the confidence at that point in time to do something yeah don't don't do it it's not worth it there's there's always another day earlier in the earlier in the day i was really confident um i was feeling really good about it even even after the circumstances that happened i still felt really good but you know, when we got back up there, you know, rain was a coming. Oh, man. And, uh, you know, it just uh, immediately the first time I, you know, stuck my nose back in there, you know, my left rear went right back in that hole. And you're like, uh, I'm done. I'm just like, you know what? It's been a day. I've gave it hell, you know. So uh, we'll, we'll leave it to another day. Yeah. So that was good. And then um, uh, I was the last one to leave windshield three at that point, And we headed up to windshield three and a half. Right. And, um, Let's see. So we started working our way back up. So, yeah, I need to mention that Phil and his son were there. Um, and Phil's got a really nice, well-built uh, CJ7. And then his son, Austin, just got this uh, this Toyota uh, with uh, tons under it, wontons. One, one tons, all the torques. Yeah, and he did well. He went up the box on three. He did. He made it up the box. And he made it up the box, impressive. and he was pulling the uh, passenger front wheel up in the air pretty good. He was he was leaning up against the side. I got to kill a fo- photo. I think he was about four feet off on that it passenger. Was, it was yeah, it was definitely there. So that was that was cool to see him uh, make it up the box. Uh, so then we get to windshield uh, three and a half, and because the spider did some work and filled in the holes, that right line, that wall on windshield three and a half was accessible. Yeah, put back in play. Yeah, and so um, uh, Kimberly uh, fought and fought it, but she finally made it up. Right. And then you made a couple stabs and made it. Yep, made it up. And then I one-shotted it. 
Yeah, you one shot at it and greased it. He uh, got to see every possible line there was to uh, well, all the homework was laid out in fr- front of him right. for him. That's so. all right, but I I, I line steined it as uh, Pete said, just uh, one shot wonder, and uh, there we go. Uh, the buggy did well, so that was cool because we haven't been able to do that line. And that is ever. a heck of a wall. I mean, that's probably it what a good a eight nine foot wall mm-hmm. at mm-hmm. least. Yep. And uh, so that's where Horton was broke down last year for oh, that's uh, right, when four we found or five it. days. Yeah. <laughs> and he got a parking ticket on the trail. Um, but, uh, yeah, then we, we motored on up, uh, you know, to four and uh, three. I'm sorry, uh, five. And then, yeah, it was a great day. We got back to camp around five-ish. Uh, I think that's that was around right. five-ish. Yeah. We beat the rain, which was great because it was supposed to start raining around 4.30. But it was well after 4.30 when we got back to camp. So yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. Um, great, great trail day. Uh, like I say, nobody pulled out a wrench or anything. It was uh, no, it was awesome. Yeah, it was it was good. Good run. We had six rigs. Uh, so uh, I, I do have to say, Kimberly's trail food is legendary. Yeah, you never go hungry uh, around her. So she had these t- huge ass tamales. Oh, biggest I've ever seen. They were bricks. And uh, had your microwave to heat them up. So. Oh yeah, the microwave is great. Right, we actually now. used Easy. your. Was it? Easy bake oven. Yeah, easy, yeah, bake, easy oven. bake oven. We easy call it. bake oven. <laughs> so much heat coming off the back of James radiator and tranny core and stuff that uh, yeah, we put the the tamales back there and heated them up, which was great. Um, but uh, yeah, she always has snacks and stuff there. You never go hungry around. Let's, let's around talk around. about her cheese spread. Oh, oh my god, my god. Yeah. that was the night before. Night before. Yeah. So the night before. Uh, dinner she goes hey we got the cheese from france and uh it is is if you know you know there was one there was four on one plate five i think there were six or seven different cheeses and they were all outstanding um and uh uh, then he had some salami and stuff that uh, i guess he got at smart final or something like that (laughs) grocery (laughs) outlet grocery outlet we we were oh man this is oh that just came from grocery outlet that's not from france It was great salami, though. It was really good salami. He could have sold it that as France, man. Yeah. And then some uh, some pecans, pecans, uh, pecans from uh, from Georgia or something there, something like that. Yeah, somewhere from the south, and uh, yeah, quite quite the charcuterie spread. Um, yeah. Uh, love the cheese and it was uh, delicious. Oh, I, I I don't think there was much left after that. Right, right. No, that was that was great. Um, so uh, let's see. We're just kind of jumping around here, but uh, I do I do have some notes here that I need to need to cover from the from the booth on um, Saturday. Oh, speaking of the booth, did uh, somebody come up from the Saturday Saturday River Run and give you the secret code word? Uh, yes, yes, they did. Yes, yeah. they did. They That's... came up and they said, Toyota suck. <laughs> Toyota suck. <laughs> so awesome. So he had a snail trail sticker, uh, on his rig. Uh huh. And I told him to pass the secret, uh, password at the booth. You never know what you might get. Right, so. right. So yeah. that was super awesome. So I hooked him up. up. I hooked him up with some stickers and stuff. Nice, nice. Yeah. No, that was cool. And then, uh, Wes, uh, out of Nevada City stopped by. Big fan of the podcast. Oh, that's right. And then uh, Sam from Walnut Creek. Oh, wow. See, this is why I take notes, because uh, it reminds me of uh, who stopped by there at the booth. We had a ton of people, um, so it was good. And hopefully uh, some new listeners that are uh, listening to the podcast for the first time, and uh, yeah, you're enjoying it. Tell your friends. Write a review. Five-star review. Five-star only. And we'll send you, what will we send you, Dave, if you, you write a five-star review? We'll send a brand new sticker. Hey, there we go. Send you a sticker in the mail. So if you, but if you're international, you might have to pay a little bit of the shipping. No, no, uh, international stamps are only like a dollar twenty-five or something. It's not bad. Yeah, just if it was a big, uh, big item to ship over there, that costs a lot of money. So all you people in Australia, feel free. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Hey, so, so we did uh, verify that uh, it was Charles Locke that called in on the podcast with the uh, the thick uh, Australian accent. Yeah. Uh, that was giving Aussie uh, props there. So that was that was good. Um, yeah. So then. Um, yeah. Well, Thursday we just hung out in camp. That was a camp day for me. I just wanted to chill, R and R, relax, and enjoy Meadow Lake. Uh, so that was nice day. It was kind of game day. We did some games. We played Metal Lake Olympics. Played Cub. What did you think of Cub, Rhonda? It, it was fun. It was like a mix of every game possible. But yeah. It was like 
what uh, cornhole and horseshoes and yeah, what else? What? bowling, yeah, bowling, what else do we yeah, have? all combined. Yeah, fun. so you got you got these batons that uh, we talked about this before uh, the podcast, but you got these batons that you throw at these little wooden blocks, and then uh, the big kings in the middle. So oh yeah, and chess, and it's like chess. It is. It oh, is you like got chess. The king in the middle. Yeah. Uh, so that was good, and then uh, then we played uh, the first annual uh, Meadow Lake Country Club golf tournament. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. <laughs> so uh, uh, Rodney uh, J O Latte Rodney and uh, Big Pete and I went out and uh, played nine holes. And so uh, Meadow Golf, traditional redneck golf, where you're just out in the pasture and you're just uh, picking an object and and. You know, okay, hey, we're going to aim for that tree. And then when you hit the tree, that's the number of strokes there or the rock or whatever it may be. Or the tractor trailer. Uh, no, no, we didn't hit the tractor trailer, Dave. That was uh, off limits. Um, so, yeah, we, we kept it uh, safe and sane out there. Um, didn't hit any uh, vehicles or anything like that, uh, airplanes flying over or anything. You know, it was good. It was good, yeah, uh, good round of golf. Um, almost uh, had a cu- couple close calls. You had to... Settled me down. I was about to tee off, and uh, you know, side by side came darting so that through. Was, <clears throat> that was the back nine today. Oh, so back you nine. and I played the back nine because uh, nobody else wanted to play. Um, so we played nine holes this afternoon on Saturday, and um, yeah, that was good. But we had a lot of traffic running through main camp. Yeah, a lot of traffic. Um, I, I didn't know there was that many uh, mosquitoes out there or golf carts. I mean, of, it, if I would have known, carts. I would have rented a golf cart. A lot you of know? golf carts, yeah. It was it was hilarious uh, playing on Thursday because uh, Rodney took his uh, latte maker as a golf cart, and then uh, Pete had his golf cart, the Kawasaki Wasabi machine there. So uh, that, that was a blast. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, yeah um so yeah and then uh, uh friday uh we we did the um that that loop uh that we talked about here earlier where we uh, saved the ford explorer and uh hung out we did get down to weber falls on uh was that sunday 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 we went to weber falls that was good yeah that was amazing uh, um, nice place to jump off. Cool water. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Uh, there was there was a, a few groups down there, but then they kind of left as we got settled in, right. which was good. So we had the falls to ourselves for a little while. Um, we've been eating some outstanding meals. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I think I've gained about ten pounds, <laughs> and it's, we have not suffered here with the food. Yeah, we never do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we ate, uh, man, we had a steak night last night and, uh, then we had, uh, what else we got? Pizza, pizza night. night. Pizza night. Wednesday night. Pizza night. And Michigan lamb dogs. chop night. Lamb Michigan. Dogs. Michigan. Oh, lamb night. Lamb night. Lamb night. You haven't had Jason's lamb. That was pretty good. Yeah. Lamb night. So, we had uh, hamburgers, which were amazing. It's pretty good. Burger night. Yeah. Pretty good. Yep. Yeah, yeah, burger night's always good. Always good. Always have burger night. Burger night's a good staple one night. Fries? You had fresh French fries, I did. I, I brought out the air fryer. Just <laughs> why not? I got the freaking RV. Let's bring out the air fryer. So it was pretty cool to and with be that out here Michigan middle of sauce? nowhere and having crispy French fries. Yeah, what would you think, Tom? You uh, jumped in on the meals here. Uh, delicious. Yeah? Yes, delicious. Oh, always good. delicious. And then we got the other Tom over here, Tom Rosa, that... Uh, what do you think of the meals? Yeah, they're all phenomenal. They're um, it's one of the best things about gr- camping with the group is um, the camaraderie. Everybody gets in together to throw down a good meal, and so no one has to do the entire thing. And sometimes you just get a chill and eat. Yeah, and, um, it's like the hammers. It's just it's so much community. Right, it's so much fun. And honestly, this is my f- I've only been to Trek once. Last came, year, yeah, last at, year. After did you, were you for here for real trek last year? Yes. Yeah. Okay. But I, I split Sunday. That's right. That's right. And then this time I came up after after trek. Yeah. Okay. Well, you, yeah, you had a trip planned, but it got uh, kibosh. So then you said, "Hey, I'm coming up." I said, "All right." You know where we're at. Yeah. And always you found love, us. Always love my friends. Always love the community. Always love wheeling with these guys. They're always very supportive and uh, very welcoming. And so I always feel like I'm at home. Well, there you go. Yeah. Well, that's how nice. we roll. Nice. That's it. Herdy might be buying a buggy, too. So oh, we'll see. Really? Oh, my God. James took me for a ride oh, in his new buggy. Boy. And I was like, okay, bro, you got to give some st- stats. Because uh, when you were on the interview with the Wheeling Wine and Whiskey last time, you didn't really go into like a lot of detail on the on the whip. I don't know if you didn't the know whip. it at the time. <laughs> uh, the whip. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, that that's a good point. I uh, I don't know. For some reason, I think I got a little sidetracked in. I think it was just everything that was going on. I was It was such a surreal moment between the buggy, the adventure, the people we got to hang out with that I kind of spaced that one. And it was super cool because I got to take some one-on-one time with you and me and the buggy. And it's like, man, that thing's just such a beautiful machine. Like all the all the walls are all, uh, what do you call it, Zeus fasteners? Yeah. Where Zeus. everything's just, you know, you pop a panel off and you got full access to all the instruments. It's just such a gorgeous built truck, man. I'm, I'm really proud that you got that. Well, thank you very much. So uh, when are you getting yours? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Well, I'm, every time I go on a ride with that truck, man, that with your uh, with your buggy, it's like, yeah, I gotta start looking. Luckily, I don't have any internet up here because I might have already picked one up. <laughs> I, I think Uncle Jesse was even talking about selling the side by side for a minute. Yeah, the buggy life's pretty good, pretty yeah. good, especially trails like this. Um, Hey, so, okay, let's wrap this thing up. Uh, we're just over an hour now, and uh, we did our, our second annual. I think it's our second annual day, second right? Annual. Whiskey tasting here yep. at Meadow Lake. Blind. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, Victoria and Rhonda took uh, random bottles out of our RVs and uh, selected six bottles to try and put them on a uh, paper plate numbered one through six. And uh, we had some of our uh, nice commemorative Jack Daniel uh, shot glasses there. That was, that worked out really well. Um, so yeah, you see, so you none of us knew that we're tasting, and uh, we had uh, James, uh, Tom, Tom Rosa, and uh, Code and I tasting, and um, it was interesting. It was fun. Uh, just because you have no idea what it is, you're tasting it, then it's like, well, how do I describe this thing? And Tom came up with, uh, what did you say, gear oil? One of them tastes like gear oil to you? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I'm supposed to use as uh, uh, descriptive terms, but the, my first sense was, well, that's gear oil. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, gear oil is like the most hideous thing known to man. My question for Tom is, how much gear oil yeah, have you much, been drinking? How much have you had on your oh, lips? The CJ goes through quite a bit of gear oil. <laughs> 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 and then what was the other descriptor? Peppermint farts or something? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know how to yeah. describe this. I'm yeah. like, am I supposed to pick up peppermint smart parts? Farts? Uh, farts? <laughs> farts? <laughs> farts? Smarts? Like unicorn uh, farts? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, no. It was, it was good. It was, you it guys was had so some good. beautiful descriptors. I, yeah. I uh, was a little jealous. No, no. It was, it was good. Caramel oak. Tom uh, Tom had uh, had some good. He goes, I don't know what I'm ta- I don't know if I like it or not. I'm like, you just got to pick whether you like it or not and rank him. Uh, so we ranked them one through six, uh, our, our favorite to least favorite, and then uh, tallied up the scores. And um, what, should we do the top three? Which where should we go through here? Uh, do yeah, we do, do we want honorable sh- mention or just the one that's an abomination? Do we want to shame the bottom? The the abomination. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this was this was the one that screwed me up last night. I still um, like Tommy's <laughs> Tommy's descriptive. What uh, did he say on that one? Not good shit. <laughs> not good shit. It's not good shit. It was uh it was smoky, it was bitter, it was harsh, it's uh high octane, and it was the uh Law's Rye. It was like hundred and thirty proof. Yeah. Hundred and thirty plus proof. Hundred and thirty six proof, I think. Um it yeah, hundred and thirty proof. It may have had Jason in bed by six yesterday. It did. It did, but hey, I reignited I took a shower and I cooked everybody's steak. So you gotta you gotta hand it to me because yeah, I am a rallied. PRO professional. You I rally I rally like a mother scratcher. Uh but yeah, I tasted that not knowing what it was, and it was our least favorite and still my least favorite. And um <laughs> I, I say we sacrifice the rest of that bottle to uh, Meadow Lake. Hey, what's uh, what's worse, the uh, Fireball or that? Yeah, um, no Fireball, definitely, definitely Fireball. But uh, yeah, that was that was gnarly. Um, and then what was our fifth? Uh, oh, right here, um, that was the Smoke Wagon. So regular Smoke Wagon came in number five, and that's a good daily drinker. Um, I put good, and it was ranked four on my list. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I was like, man, this is just, um, like butterscotch and good, but it wasn't like, it it was light. It was on the lighter side and I, I, that's why I ranked it, uh, fourth on mine. 
Um, anybody have any comments on the smoke wagon? I make that. I rank that one number one for me. You, you rank that one number one. So you like that one? Like I say, it's a good daily drinker. It's easy um, going down. It didn't have a whole lot of depth, but that's their entry level bottle at thirty thirty five bucks, which is a great value. I'm an entry level drinker. You just started. You're right. You just started. Hey, welcome to the program, Tom. That's good. Um, so then, um, our fourth. Uh, which some people ranked uh, uh, high up there, was uh, the Whistlepig Pit Viper Edition. <laughs> so you just picked that up at Costco. Um, and uh, Whistlepig, I, I, I was put off by this. Just I had a question mark. It was sweet. I got honey. And it was just like interesting. I just couldn't put my, my finger on it. Um, I ranked it as my fifth uh, out of six. But uh, it got some high marks from people. Yeah, Any, it was a couple people's number two choice. Yeah, so there you go. Anybody, anybody would comment on that? Yeah, Tom? it was my number two choice. You're I thought it two? wasn't too hot. It was uh, had a little bit of long finish on it. Um, look at me using technical terms. Yeah, you're doing. You look at you just from an hour ago where you are now. Yeah, yeah, that's impressive. It. It's awesome. Uh, I had that as my number two as well. You did. Uh, um, you liked I just it. thought it was very smooth. You know, it had a little heat on the back end, but uh, yeah, it was good. Yeah. Um, and then our third, uh, which here we go. Number three came in right there was the Costco small batch straight. <laughs> Wait, right. Yes. So Dave and I were on it. Uh, that was my number three. Yeah, that was my third also. And if you remember from our last one, a couple years ago, same damn it's thing. It's right there in the top three. And damn. that, that's like $20 for a liter of, uh, whiskey. What's that? Yeah, we, I think yeah, we I did. Really we pretty too. much were we're pretty synonymous with that. Yeah, were synonymous. We? There was one that had it at two. Mm. The one that you guys were all synonymous with was was six. The, wow. Yeah. The laws. Six. six and that's sweet. those surprise things that you find with these blind taste testing is you know you never expect. Yeah. Nope. Nope. And that's why I love it. it. Takes a label, the you know any connotation, uh, any uh, preconceived notions of a bottle are out the window and it's just what you're tasting and what you're smelling. Um, so yeah, solid Costco can't go wrong. Um, let's see. And then number two, number two, I really liked, I ranked it number two. Um, I, I put smooth buttery caramel, um, and, uh, that was the wooden veil, wooden veil, uh, straight bourbon. And, um, yeah, I I really like that. You were up there too, right? No, Dave? that was my fourth. It oh, was, that was okay. your fourth. It was just I wasn't impressed with it, and you know, it was good. Who else had that? A couple of you had that ranked high. Uh, Tom I did. I Tom did. had it as number two. Yeah, you liked it. I had number two. Yeah. 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 See, and that's uh, what about you, Rosa? What did you uh, have that one ranked at? I had that one as number four. Oh, number four. Okay, and that's uh. another good value too. That one's uh, very well. Uh, uh, yeah, fairly priced. It 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 has, and I had it a couple years ago, and I really liked it when I uh, when I had it. I've seen it in the stores, and I I bought um, a bottle of it a year ago or so, and I've I've really enjoyed it. So uh, good to know that uh, I did rank it number two out of uh, all those. Um, and then number one, drum roll, do, 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 drum roll. by da, 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 far. Da. Wow. This was surprising to me. Not super surprising, but surprising to me. And I had a bottle of this that I just finished like a month ago. Jefferson's Rye, which I'm really liking the rye. Cognac cask finish. Cognac cask finish. Jefferson's Rye was our number one. And uh, that was pretty synonymous with everybody. It was really smooth, great finish, rounded out, uh, not... You know, it was it was just a very well balanced, good tasting straight. And we're drinking all these straight, by the way. This was not over ice or or anything for the initial tasting. Some people added ice to it and water over the time, but uh, on second, third, fourth tastings, but uh, all straight. And um, it was it was really good. Uh, yeah, it was great. Uh, I believe that that was the first time I've had that one, and so it's going to go on the shopping list for sure. Yeah, Jefferson's has always been good. Um, you know, they start getting a little pricey with their, uh, you know, different voyages and all that stuff. And it's, uh, 
uh, it's it's good, but a uh, little gimmicky. But um, I, I think they're they're regular, and this one is not inexpensive. I want to say it's somewhere around a sixty dollar bottle or yeah, so, 60, 70, 70 something in there. And I would say that's worth it. It's it's a solid solid bottle, but you start paying you know hundred dollars plus for Jeffersons. Uh, I I don't know if it's much better than this this cognac finish one. No. I haven't right. met a Jeffersons yet that I haven't yeah, liked. Yeah, that's the right. The are good. The regulars are good. I was just going to say, they're, they're all um, good across the board. Um, it's just like uh, uh, Woodford's. I, I, I love all the Woodford's, too. Um, so can you offer any detail on the cognac finish? What is what is that? So it's uh, finished in uh, a cognac cast, so cast barrels that were... <laughs> <laughs> just got shot. Did you just get shot with Fucking salt? Tommy just shot me with <laughs> a damn assault <laughs> <Sorry>. gun. <laughs> Your own salt gun. Um, but they're cony. They were uh, barrels that had cognac in them. Oh, so, so this is where they aged. Yeah. So then they aged the Jefferson's rye inside this uh, barrel that had cognac in it before. So it picks up the the cognac that's in the wood um, and just you know changes the flavor profile. Um, with the aging process there. Very um, nice. Yeah, and I, I've seen it with different barrels. You know, there's, there's uh, Old Elk has a whole port uh, cask finish, you know. Uh, they have a whole, like, cigar series uh, that they did with different different finishes, uh, cask finishes. And uh, it, just, it just adds a different nuance to the, to the whiskey. Just um, a different flavor profile? Yeah, exactly. And it's not... You know, good, bad, or indifferent. It's just kind of personal preference, and uh, oh, it obviously worked. we it liked worked it. in this crew. Yeah, yeah, it worked for us. So, so wow, was interesting. That was, that's way farther down the rabbit hole than I can. Think yeah, of. yeah. I'm like, give me some ice and uh, give me some. Well, I know, but that's well, I was surprised there was no Seven Up that we chased with. Right? Yeah. No. 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 Not at all. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so there we go. So that was uh, that was a fun. Instead of recording it, because we had a lot of dead spots when we recorded it last time, I thought eh, let's just do a review afterwards, and I think that worked out much better. So uh, let us know what you think. Uh, you know, hit us up on the uh, Wheeling Whiskey Wheeling Wine and Whiskey Hotline, which I hear we have several voicemails to play. No idea what you're talking about. Really? No idea what okay. you're talking about. Well, we'll have to see. Apparently, my phone was lost last night yeah. after I Don't- got. I got poisoned, overserved by you, Dave. Do not leave your phone alone. That's all I'm going to say. You know, it fell out of my pocket, clearly, in the chair that you're sitting in there. But, uh, yeah, that hi, was... Um, hi, Mom Green. You called my mom. You, you <laughs> called the hotline. I think you called Snail Trail Podcast. Who? Oh, this is going to be great. I love it. <laughs> Let's get stuff, right? you know. Hi, Jimmy. Why? You know what they say. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. So here we are. That's why we go camping also, together. Also, don't be afraid to leave a voicemail about, you know, maybe a uh, certain brand that you like, um, whether, you know, you're getting in depth as much as Jason is about, you know, how it's aged and everything, to whether you're a Tommy and it's just not good shit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely want to hear it all, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, we all learn from each other and might come across the one that we haven't tried yet. Exactly, exactly. And what Have is your ever... phone number? Oh, I know. 408-800-5169. That's correct. Nice. You dialed that a few times last night. 408-800-5169. I, I was uh, impressed. Maybe, I damn maybe remember the number twice. last night. I am. Yeah, I was wondering how you guys remember that. That's because good. you guys say it three times well, every see, time. that's it. That's exactly it. 408-800-5169. Call now. <laughs> Get your Ginsu but for the bet. snail trail, we had to listen to their voice message a few Ooh, times to that get that. Oh yeah, true. Rodney's. They coming might after have them. made a Rod- uh, Rodney's latte maker. Happy. Really? Yeah. Oh, they wow. might have offended him. That's all I'll say. Oh, Talking oh. shit about a latte grabber. Oh wow! <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, that's good. I can't wait to hear this one. <laughs> well, um, I think we should put a bow on this thing. It's getting dark. Uh, we need to fix dinner. And uh, Tom's getting uh, ready to shoot somebody else with the assault gun. So uh, <laughs> I think it's time to vacate the RV here. Uh, any last words there over there, uh, the the Davenports? Um, ah, put me on the spot. I got nothing. How about you go around the table and come back? No, you gotta go. Gotta go now. Gotta go now. Huh? Wrap it up, man. What uh, do you got? Wrap it up. I would say uh, Sierra Trek for the win. Okay, well there you go, Rhonda. Um, get out there and camp with your friends. Make make great memories. There you go. That's good. All right, Tommy. From the old times, F Y Y F F. That's right. That's exactly right. Very well said. Hey, Code. This is the greatest place in the world. But like I said. 
Don't tell nobody. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. And Mr. Rosa. Keep it on the down low and uh, happy trails, y'all. That's awesome. And with that, we are out. Well, there you go. Are you FOMOing out yet? Oh, shit. I've been FOMOing the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, we, uh, we wrap that up and uh, eased into the evening. Um, and then, uh, you know, yeah, it was, uh, it was a good, good night. That, that Saturday night to close things out. So Yeah. That's, see, that's my favorite part of the... I mean, and I'm not... You know, the hardcore wheeling, as I've mentioned before on the show, is not my, really my bag anymore. But uh, I love being in camp. I love the, the camaraderie and the stories and the hanging out and the food and all that stuff. And, and of course, movie night. Did you, did you do movie nights? We didn't do movie night. And I was going to say, there was a couple nights, I think three nights, we didn't even have a fire. What? I mean, we were just hanging out and talking and drinking at the our camp, you know, um, uh, where the kitchen and stuff was set up because the fire was above us uh-huh. um, in the fire ring. And so I was, I was like, wow, we didn't even have a fire last night, did we? Nope. Um, but <laughs> yeah, we didn't play cornhole. Um yeah, it was just just one of those one of those deals, but um I I was uh, I had every intention of recording Wednesday night to have Glenn and Kimberly there. Uh huh. Um, but man, we just got off the trail and then it was like, all right, let's get cleaned up and then let's fix dinner. And then, you know, it was like before we knew it, it was like nine thirty, and people were starting to drop like flies. So I'm like, well, that's, that's a, that's a dead duck tonight. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you know, I mean, you play, play hard all day and, and, uh, you know, everybody, you know, just everybody runs out of gas, you know, one, at some point. Yeah, yeah. I burned about 20, 20 gallons of uh, freedom fuel <laughs> up there at Meadow Lakes. That's pretty good. I think James did about 30. Really? He, he, yeah, he, he did a couple of lone, lone Ranger runs, and every time somebody came into camp, let's go do trail. So his buggy ran well. I, I don't, he had to break out one little wrench. He had a little radiator leak. Oh, he JB weld. I think that's all he had to mix up some JB weld and throw it on the radiator. But he's got to have that ground down and welded before trail hero. But it was, I'm like, James, wasn't it nice? You didn't have to wrench on your rig every single day, you know? That's what he was like the year before. I mean, it was like wrenching it. It The year before that, it was not. And then, of course, when we were at King of the Hammers that that year with his new, with the the new buggy. And it was just like between the spring changes and shit, he wrenched. I mean, he spent more time wrenching than he did wheeling, I think. I mean, that's the best thing of the buggy life is that they're just so well built that, you know, knock on wood, but you're, you're not having to, you know, you're not, you're, you're, you're not working small components. You're working big components. So, you know, your breakage is a lot less. Now it's yeah. putting any deeper into shit and trying some ridiculous walls and other stuff that break stuff or flips you over. But, uh, you know, that's the trade off, I guess. But right. it was nice. I, I just had to tighten up my diff covers. I I, I got to work on those before Trail Hero because the bottom bolts are just completely shaved down. And so <laughs> um, trying to keep the gear oil inside the diff uh, was, was my challenge. But um, other than that, I just splashed gas in it, checked all my uh, blue paint on all the bolts, and everything was good. And I was like, rock and roll, man. Let's go back out. So yeah, um, yeah. Good, good, solid trip as always, and uh, you know I'm I'm sad I'm still not there, but uh, I got plenty of work to keep me busy now moving forward here the next couple months and getting ready for Trail Hero next. Yep, right on. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in between, but I know you got a few things to button up on your move, and uh, which is I guess and we got ZukaCon next weekend. I may may uh, make a guest appearance out there. I don't know. We'll see. I kind of thought you might. It's we'll just see. around the corner. I there's mean, there's a- several things going on next weekend, and just depends on how the rest of this week goes, whether I can make it out there. But uh, Amber will be out there uh, with, I don't know what annual this is, uh, ZukaCon that she started. Um, so that is going to be happening uh, this weekend. And then we've got, uh, man, uh, it's like just weeks away to Trail Hero. Oh, our safety clinic's coming up the third Again? weekend in September. Yeah, that's, a, that's right. Um, so that'll be uh, the 16th. And then uh, and then what do we got? Uh, Major uh, event will be Trail Hero after that. Oh, you yeah. probably have that October run on the Rubicon. 
Uh, there uh, will be that, yes. Yeah. So Trail Heroes the, uh, will be leaving at the end of September and then that, that full first week of October mm-hmm. uh, is Trail Hero. And then, um, then yeah, then it's Rubicon. And then um, the snow starts falling. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. That'll be good. So I'd like to get a Barrett run in. Um, trying to do some sort of a Barrett run in September. Yeah. And um, yeah, then that'll that'll be kind of kind of it for four wheeling i think but it's been been uh been a busy busy spring and uh, no wheeling but i got my wheeling fixed last week so i'm, I'm pretty did. good right now <laughs> good. you're not shaking anymore i can see that no so. no and man it was just yeah the stress level was so high going into the trip and then you know, then it was just like you're on your game up there at uh, at Trek, and then once everybody left Sunday, I was able to relax and bye bye, bye bye. Now I've said it before, bye-bye. and I'll say it again. That watching the conga line of vehicles leave on Sunday morning, and then by noon, one o'clock Sunday afternoon, the place is pretty much deserted. And yeah. that's uh, then you start moving around into your permanent week long campsite, uh, right? And get yourself set set up and. You kind of get into the into the whole other mindset, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, we got a couple more voicemails here. You yeah, want to one of them, uh, play I those? Think is from a from a close relative of mine, actually. What? Yeah, is that, who that is. All right, let's see. I told her. <laughs> you told her to call in. Yeah. I can't believe you make that phone number public. I'm gonna have a good time. So this is Chris's cousin. Rosalyn, also known as Rozzy, and it was such a pleasure to see him after too many years. And I've got some input for you. You need some girl talk on there, but otherwise, it's a great, great podcast, and I'm going to enjoy catching up. I've got just 221 more episodes to go. Oh, you got <laughs> Looking long forward to, go. to it, guys. Bye. Thanks, right, Rosie. Well, Love you very much. There's Rosie. Uh, yeah, well, she's she's obviously only listened to one episode, but we have a lot of girl talk. We've had a lot of uh, women wheelers on here. That's correct. Amber is, uh, I believe, still our number one um, guest on the show. That's is awesome. that correct? By, by I, one or two. I yeah. believe so. Kevin Jones, close second. Uh, Rodney Muller and, uh, and Samurai James are, are quickly uh, banging on the door, too. Uh, but Megan... Megan Miller. That's right. Uh, Megan account on Instagram there. We've had her on. We've had, uh, of course, Holly, the Huntress. Holly Fowler of the Huntress. Yeah, yeah. Holly Fowler of uh, Mischief Maker there. Um, my gosh. I mean, yeah, we, we definitely uh, try to encourage the women to... Uh, to Charlene to, Bauer. Sh- Charlene know. Bauer. I just saw her up at Trek. She had a booth right across from us with the That's Ladies right. Network. It was super cool. She did a... Um, little recovery class for the ladies up there and uh, some of us guys were uh, were eavesdropping as well um, but it was cool she had models and she had the tow rope set up and got the people involved and and teaching you know different techniques and what works and what doesn't work and everything it was it was really cool and then her dad Ben walked over because like I say our booth was right across and I said hey you got to be pretty proud of your daughter there that's that's pretty cool and he's like yeah that's that's pretty cool so um, yeah no they're the they listen. the The women listen during our safety clinic and everything. So I, <laughs> That's right. we definitely, us guys can't keep a keep a you know we're squirrels can't stay on task. That's right. <laughs> yeah. we've had a lot of women on the show for sure. Absolutely. So yeah, uh, yeah, cool. Thanks, super uh, for calling in, Rozzy. That was super Rozzy. cool. And- okay, I got I got two more here. <laughs> These are not going to be good. These were recorded on uh, on Friday night Uh-oh. after. Do we want to play play them? <laughs> Well, let's see. You can always beep it out, right? Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Hey, is this the Toyota hate line? My name's Billy. I'm here with my brother, Billy, my second cousin, Billy, my third cousin, Billy, and my brother, Bob. You know what? They're all here. You know what we did? Get over here. God damn it. We found this fucking phone. We don't know who the fuck phone it is, but this is the number it said to call. Why the fuck do you leave the phone here? Right? Why? Because I was shopping for a Toyota. You know what? <laughs> Toyotas are awesome. They are way better than buggies, especially blue buggies. Turds, 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 turds. That's all we got to say. Toyota's rule. Bye. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to beep that one out. That's what happens when uh, when uh, whiskey is involved uh, late evening. Um, 
Yeah, I after Dave poisoned me with the uh, laws. <laughs> Apparently, I left my sweatshirt, my Tac One Fab sweatshirt, and uh, my phone in his uh, RV. And thank God he brought his RV because, uh, like I say, it dumped rain um, a few nights. And, you know, we got easy ups and stuff. And I had my awnings out, and, you know, we could chill under the awning. And that was, that was fine for a while. But then it was like, dude. Dave, we're going in your RV. We're playing Liar's Dice. We're gonna we're gonna drink some whiskey and play Liar's Dice. So uh-huh. yeah, that was he poisoned me and that. stole my phone. Is what he did. That's oh, that's dude. our lawyer. That's our lawyer. Cody hmm. Nelson. Yeah. yeah. Okay. One more. Jason, Chris, uh, this is your lawyer, uh, oh, Cody Nelson. Uh, we put all the paperwork together. I just oh, need to get so the right. signature to officially make the transfer of uh, Ronnie being the co-host with Chris. <laughs> so just call him. We need to get this done as soon as possible. Uh, I know it's over. Sorry, breaks are tough. We got to get this done, guys. Call me back. Breakups <laughs> are tough. Yeah. Well, there it is. It's official. Uh, I do have the paperwork on my desk here. So Rodney will be the new co-host of uh, the Wheeling Wine and Whiskey just podcast. Just think about the big payout you're going to get, though. Yes. Yes, let's see. All those four plus years, zero dollars a year times four is still zero. You're you're Great. right. <laughs> I can retire. What are you gonna do with your windfall? I don't know, but I could use that time back. I really could. I need. I need. You can never have too much time. <laughs> so uh, I'm looking forward to having a bunch of extra time and uh, doing some more wheeling and stuff. And be skiing great. and wheeling and, and skiing, maybe buy a buy wheeling, a golf, golf cart and golf golf. Uh, yeah, so, um, definitely looking for a used Can-Am. So if anybody knows of a used Can-Am golf Dude, cart th- out there's there. Gonna, there's going to be a lot coming up because I Can-Am introduced I a brand know. new. That new one, a lot of people, a lot of hate on the new Can-Am. Oh, really? A lot of hate. Yeah, it's like, good luck. You can only put 35-inch tall tires on it the way the suspension's all set up on it. So right. good luck, players, but so I don't know. backwards from the, the X3? This is well. No, it's a well. It depends on what what side of the fence you're on, and you know everybody's got an opinion. And there's a ton of keyboard warriors going crazy right now. Um, so I don't know. I just know that the the limit on tire size is putting a lot of people off uh, the suspension. But um, we'll see. I, it's not my arena. I just I know I after talking with Big care. Pete. He goes, hey, get a Can-Am. That's going to be the best for the desert. You've already got a rock crawler. He goes, get get the Can-Am for, for desert wheeling right behind your house. So uh, so I'm in the market for a used Can-Am. Oh, boy. Yeah. Definitely you know, need a new ho- Rubber new band co-host. douche coupe. Rubber band douche. Well, that's it. So since I'm, I'm out of the podcast, uh, I'll start another podcast. I'll call it uh, Rubber Band Douche Coupes and Rum. That's what we call it. <laughs> Rubber band, rouge, rouge, goose, and rum. I'll just freaking, totally change it up. I'm going to totally change it up. You're going to get a skirt, one of those uh, Polynesian skirts you're going to wear too on the show or what? Ooh, yeah, a grass skirt. You mean? Grass, that's what I was thinking of, grass skirt. Yeah, yeah. grass skirt. Yeah. You, know, you want to be a guest on the show, you need to put on this grass skirt and these coconut bra. The first person I'm going to interview on that podcast is the Hawaiian rapist, Kamana Wanalea. Oh, my that's God. That's who we're going to. That's right, who we're we're going downhill fast. <laughs> I'm out of coffee. <laughs> All right. On that note, how do they get a hold of us, Chris? Well, usual ways. I'm going to pre-record this so I can uh, have it clean. But anyway, you can <laughs> <laughs> you can get us on the IG at Wheeling Wine Whiskey, or you can uh, you can email Jason or Chris at wheelingwinewhiskey.com. Also, one of the best ways, which you've heard three or four of those today, is to leave a voice message on our hotline the uh, wheeling wine and whiskey hotline which is 408 800 5169 408 800 5169 leave a message and more than likely it's going to get played on the air the good the bad and the ugly get played um i'm getting a phone call right now from carson valley and bank oh shit. i think i think lorenzo's requesting a credit line increase deny this, deny the deny call denying this i got to take this call man <laughs> So with that, we're out. <laughs> <laughs>